Hello, people of Earth. It's Wednesday night, and you know what that means. Everybody's asking the same question they do at this time, at this hour, on this day, every single week. And that is, hey, did you see this one? Hello, everybody, and welcome to Hey, Did You See This One? We're here, we're here, get used to it. This week, we are talking about... What, What, Steve? Did you have something to say about my intro? Yeah, you're not allowed to take that saying. I'm taking it back, buddy. (laughs) Taking it back for the straights. For the people who are here. I don't think we had it first. No, we created it, you dildo. Okay, I'm sorry that I said that. Listen, um, we're talking uh, Krull from 1983. It is, yeah. And I want to, yeah. I want to make an amendment. Um, I guess it's not really an amendment, sort of an explanation. We were supposed to cover this movie for Fan Picks December back in December 2022, uh, mm. but our guest this week, Aaron, give it up for A. A. Ron. He couldn't make Hello, it. Ron. Ron. Uh, we couldn't. I've never heard that joke. I've never, no, never, ever, <laughs> ever, ever heard it. Not since mad tv yesterday 1998 yeah. and then probably all the way to yesterday we yeah. couldn't uh we couldn't get it it's together. only funny if there are two errands and the other one is e r i n and then you call one double a ron and the other one erin that's when it gets funny again we had that in there's two of them we had that we, in we've, we've, we've we've had that yeah we had lots of errands so um i want to just say that instead of <laughs> instead of having Aaron on for a just one episode fan pick um episode in december we we took the movie he actually uh requested or suggested and we made a whole month around it now i don't know if he'll be back next week we haven't gotten that far we have to see if he can do one podcast um but (laughs) (laughs) but we did actually make a whole month for you and february is called february adventure films Oh, I'm so pumped. Or so that's pumped. what it's called? Not Hold February on. Fantasy? <laughs> was it February That actually sounds a lot better. I think we're going to go with that. Yeah. Fe- February or, Fantasy. Or The yeah, Adventure yeah. of February. The Adventure Ooh. of February. We're, we're live. We're, we're figuring it out live here on the show. The uh, Fantastical yeah. Fantasy February Fun Daganta. Yeah. Oh break that God. down. Because I like I liked oh. long names. Uh, last month, oh. Aaron, we called it was uh, Janu- uh, John, John Carpenter, Carpenter Presents. January year two was the name of the month because it was the second year. year. Ah, yes. Okay. Um, that said, very clinical, very clinical <laughs> year two. Yeah. yeah. Two. It's like Batman. There was a colon there and everything. <laughs> it's like there when was. Batman uh, started to learn how to crime fight and not be a little bit. Learn how to bat. Learn how to bat, man. Um, so Aaron, thank you for coming on. I understand. Thank you for having me. This it's is, fun. this is your first podcast ever ever that's the first time i've really spoken to people for more than five ten minutes so man you're gonna get so many yeah. followers after this i don't have anything to follow me on your well, dms are gonna blow up your dms are gonna uh, blow up they're gonna be people literally following you around on yeah. the street <laughs> <laughs> i'm in the middle of nowhere so i welcome the company oh where there's a will there's a way my friend um and as always i'm your host this week jason Phillips, and I'm joined by my two co hostiest co hosts in the universe Cage, K- Kaylin the K Man. Nope, doesn't start with a K. And Steve the Sleeve from the Sleeve World. I'm from Sleeve World, and there are no sleeves there anymore. They're all gone now. What happened? We lost them in the Sleeve War. <laughs> uh, Do pant legs count? Those are not sleeves. Those are <laughs> leg, leg sleeves. Leg, leg sleeves. Yeah. Leg no. sleeves. Tell me you know the history of pants and you when know that we, they're just sleeves. When we kill <laughs> our enemies, we take their pant legs and wear them as sleeves to that's, replace the sleeves that were lost in the sleeve war. That's pure efficiency. All right, no, so this is a stupid bit. I don't your like D&D it. Your D&D is coming through <laughs> a little bit where you just How keep far going. will we go? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, uh, I gave... Wait, wait. Leaveland. Continue. Sleeveland. Oh, God, no. <laughs> Sleeveland sunk to the bottom of the lotion. I keep setting them off. I keep setting them off. It's going to go on and on now. 
Yeah. Okay. I gotta shut this fireplace off. It's hot here. He's gonna die. Um, I would like to. This is going to be an unorthodox episode because I because people who um haven't done the podcast thing before are learning on the fly. And also, no Kay- idea what I'm doing. Also, Kalen's learning on the fly, so we're all learning together. He's wearing I'm a suit, learning. but he's wearing a goddamn suit this week. That's yeah. uh, that's straight out of pocket. You know, you know that he's a uh, stand up. I'm trying to world. hide the fact that I'm still learning <laughs> by making it look like. Yeah, I thought you were gonna say that I'm not wearing pants. But here's the thing <laughs> about Kalen compared to compared to me, who's been podcasting for eight years, and Steve, who's just the talent. Um. Kalen actually does stand up and is an actor, I guess officially now. <laughs> Background. <laughs> so we we all bring our we all bring what we bring to the podcast. So I'd like to thank you, Aaron, for being on. And that's our show for tonight. So we'll see you next week. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, we are talking about the 1982 uh, fantasy adventure film Krull. Um, we 1983. Yes. Uh, 83. 83. 83. Son of a bitch. Aaron, did you pick this one? I did. I did. It's one of my absolute terrible favorites. Well, let's, I will not lie. <laughs> let's do this. We, we start off every show with uh, giving a little bit of background um, about our history. A background about our history. That's redundant. Um, <laughs> about the film we're doing. Uh, normally, mm. I like to start with myself because I... Uh, and selfish but you know what i think for once i'm gonna let the guest go first why don't you tell us a little history about your history fuck why do i keep doing that <laughs> give <laughs> us been, some history about your history i've been doing podcasts wow, once for upon a, decade, a time and i'm hitting you with that nonsense uh why don't you hit us with a little bit of your background on the film crawl from 1983 well i uh you know, it all started when my parents figured out how to steal satellite dish signals when we were young. And so as a very, very young man, I had access to all kinds of crazy science fiction movie channels. And I saw Crow when I was like, I don't know, seven, and then saw it 400 more times up until now. So it's, it's terrible. It's absolutely terrible. So, <laughs> so, oh wow! This is the first time a guest has come on to be like, "Fuck this movie!" <laughs> oh, I love it! I love it so much. I actually just watched it again last night, and it it holds up. That's yeah. I mean, it does hold. It holds up, up as a bad movie. <laughs> the, the thing about we'll get into it, but the thing about it is like we had Ben on last for the, the whole month for the hair. I I, I watched some. Uh, I watched some. He's got yeah, incredible he's got hair. Great hair. We incredible on, hair. We brought him on to talk about uh, Escape from New York, L.A., and the unofficial third one, uh, Escape from Mars, a.k.a. Ghost of Mars. And he lo- like loved each movie less and less as we went on. Um, but he picked, he actually picked Escape from New York as his movie that he picked. And he unironically loves that movie. And we sat here and ripped it to shreds. And, <laughs> like, you know, in almost, like, I went back and edited the episode because there were, we had some technical difficulties we had to edit out. Technically, we had technical difficulties. <laughs> and uh, I had to rewatch that footage, and I like I saw the soul leave his body a couple times. <laughs> like he was watching in third person a couple times, and just being like, "Why am I doing?" Like he's got a podcast that's like more successful than ours. It's the, basically the same idea. It seems like I stole the idea from them. It's called. Did the, you? It's I didn't. We, Coincidentally like, enough, we didn't. No, and no? yeah, we, we didn't steal the idea of talking about movies on a <laughs> podcast from him. We did not. This is a hundred percent original idea. Yeah, yeah, talking about movies on a Zoom call at fucking ten o'clock at night while having a beer with your friends. It's I'll for that. I I came up with that. Actually, Kalen was the idea the idea man on this show, so you can. And thank I him. perfected it. <laughs> and Steve made fun of Jaws on, live on the air. Anyway, my point is, is you are. You are legitimately the first person. You're now our fourth guest, or fourth different guest, and you're the fourth person to come on with the love hate relationship for your movie. So mm. that being said, was there anything else, anything else about your history with the movie you wanted to say? <clears throat> I'd like to hear your opinion. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> uh, let's move it on to because I have mine's a little bit long winded. Let's uh, let's hear from Steve next. See oh me okay um so i've always known about this movie i've seen clips screenshots 
uh, parodies even of Krull, but I, I had never actually watched Krull. Oh, what a and treat for you this has been. Oh, it was, it was <laughs> such a treat. I cannot tell you how excited I was when I put it on for the first time two weeks ago. Uh, we took a week off last week, but I just decided, like, hey, I'll watch Crawl. It was on sale for one dollar on my <laughs> Xbox, so I was like, I'll buy it and watch it Worth right it. now. Worth it. And I did. And when I saw the the credits coming up, I was like, Don't know who that is. Don't know who that is. Liam Neeson, <laughs> Robbie you. Coltrane. Hold on a minute. Right? This movie is stacked. Cast. Yeah. All star cast. Um, don't forget Alan Armstrong. He's Alan everything. Armstrong, David the, Batley, yes, the teacher, yes. the teacher, Charlie Bucket's teacher from uh, the Charlie and the Chocolate Factory movie. Isn't that crazy? Uh, I was excited, and then it started happening, and I was like, "Oh, okay, yes, <laughs> I see." This was directed <laughs> by a man who was old, very old in the eighties. And he's and, making this movie like an old man would make a movie. I, and he I had to take a vacation halfway through. He's like, this is too stressful. <laughs> These nerds, they keep writing me letters about Krull. Um, but, you know, I'll, I'll say that my, my first watch was fine. My second watch was better, which I watched it again just to, you know, refresh for the talk today. But that was the first time I watched it, it was two weeks ago. Uh, it was one of those things where I, I knew the poster. Like I, when, as soon as Jason was like crawl, I was like, yeah, he's holding some sort of fucking starfish, and there's a bunch of lights coming out of it, and there's like a big weird castle with a face in it in the background. It looks like He Man, and I knew what he was talking about. And then I I looked up the trailer, and I was like, I think I've seen this. But then while watching it, I was like, I've never fucking seen this ever. Uh, but yeah, my first time watching it was two weeks ago, and I'll wait to extrapolate on my experience until we get a little bit deeper. When you're seven, these special effects, they blow your mind. <laughs> yeah, that's that is part of the... That's... And when you're in your 30s, they just blow. <laughs> <laughs> that's part of the conversation um, about a lot of these movies that happens. When we did Big Trouble in Little China, I said very, oh. much, very much so that the, the special effects are kind of lame. The practical effects are great, but the special effect parts like the you know like rear rear it's more it's more the, the this era it's like it's more the digital effects that yeah. suck the, the practical effects yeah. are always great no matter where you are when you are it's like, like oh yeah that's a rubber man i love rubber man rubber man is good <laughs> but like rubber man projected onto the rear of like a you know flaming horse not but not the good. Thing, the thing that we kind of figured Rubber Man look bad. Is like these movies hold a special place if you f see them age appropriately. And that's why Ben loves yeah. Halloween, which I don't care for. And he loves uh, Escape from New York, which we, like I said, we all ripped apart. And then none of us were like age appropriate, really. Or we were like too old for the bullshit in 96 for uh, Escape from LA. And we were all above it then. And we were all above it trying to rewatch it in our 30s. I. Loved it, and still to this day love Escape from L.A. And that's fine. Because it is... <laughs> I, I think there are two cam there's two camps you can live in, right? Or I guess the third one, which there's is like the, out the Outlands. It's just like, I don't know. Good, but bad. Like, yeah. Either you love Escape from New York or you love Escape from L.A. And there's... LA's there's better. New York is there. But rarely will you find a person that loves both. And then there's like <laughs> the Outland person who's like, they're both kind of bad. Like, what are you guys talking about? What are you warring over here? But uh, yeah, this movie sort of fall. We'll get into. We're. I feel like we're gonna have lots to say about the fact that you gotta watch these movies when, like, when you're age appropriate. There's no way to do it now unless you have some sort of like brain time machine. But anyway, we'll get to it. Uh, Kaylin, why don't you tell us your history with this film? And I'm saying film, so you know what that means. This uh, is a movie. <laughs> um, we're, we'll, I'll explain. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Based on your criteria, it's a film. Well, there's that horse chase. You can call those cars, I guess. Those or are like, chase, but... okay, and, they, and they also are technically making tiny explosions with their feet. Like, okay, I guess yeah. The, the <laughs> magic Clydesdale. <laughs> They're called fire, fire mares. Fire mares. Fire mares. Fire mares. <laughs> Sorry, Caleb. Yeah. Before you go on, I, I, what I'll do is I'll just say that I have a I have criteria where a film has the absence of a high speed chase and an explosion. Um, I have the absence. Uh, yeah, a, film, a movie yeah, has those two things. Um, you telling me that all the five films are not 
Still. Somehow this has become like a rule for the entire podcast, which it's not. Oh, Steve I, hates I, it. I, I love... steadfast and like <laughs> fuck you for even. I do not that. agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I do not good. agree. I love that for you. Gone uh, in sixty seconds is not a film. Do you want to fight? Like, are you serious? <laughs> <laughs> it has, oh, bad example. Um, I did it on purpose for you. I know, I know. All right, <laughs> sorry. We should probably stop talking to each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. We're talking over. Right? No, this is part of the fun. This is what the viewers like. I don't know what I'm doing. I, so. I could be yelling right now. The other thing that I do that Steve actually likes is the Home Alone of it all. And this movie gets right to the Home Alone of, of it all. And the idea is that most movies have like their setup bit of the movie. Sometimes it takes minutes. Sometimes it takes the whole first act. But then they get to the thing that you see on the poster. And the Home Alone of it is Home Alone is when he goes and starts making the fucking traps. And then the guys go through the traps. That's the Home Alone of a movie. When they go to the thing that you came to the movie for. Um, <laughs> pretty simple explanation. It's a, good, it's a good analogy. I like it. Yeah. Because this movie, they get to the Home Alone of it almost immediately. Like some right would even say point. almost too fast <laughs> you're like hold on hold on maybe he shouldn't have the glaive already what the it's fuck? okay we can't use it at all for anything so it's fine <laughs> yeah you use it once and it gets stuck in people anyway sorry Kaylin, it's you're up buddy yeah we <laughs> you stuff your stories in a sack i'll stick my glaive but... in a fucking nether demon from the ultimate wonder plane that was good that was just out of nowhere oh, <laughs> yeah, hey cock uh words i saw this movie for the first time monday night and then i rewatched it again last night uh t- I-, I watched it for the first time just to watch it just with just to watch it take it in and then i watched it again last night to kind of take some notes on it um i've actually never heard of it seen it no recollection of it um i there is a part of me that it that, that does enjoy seeing movies that i know nothing about because i do kind of get that initial you know, awe and wonderment a little bit if it, you know, if it happens. Um, but yeah, that was That's implying uh, I it just... didn't happen for you. <laughs> like it did never happen this time. Well, we're, we'll get into it for sure. But yeah, this this week was that scenery is beautiful. Short and sweet. Oh, that you. That's 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 you. Um, okay. Well, Wait, we can see. drink during this. Yeah, what man. Um, my wife stole my pen. Where's that at out... right now? They're going to say, my wife locked the liquor cabinet. (laughs) So she won't watch this. I have a reveal. I have a reveal to you guys that you guys are going to find so stupid. And, and uh, Steve's going to be like, oh, that makes a lot of sense. So originally I wanted, when we were toying with the idea of doing a month based around this movie, I wanted to do big, beefy boys, big, beefy action boys. And, Steve goes, what are you talking about? There's no bit. I guess that the main character guy, John, I kept writing him down as John Krull because I fucking never caught his name. John Krull is hot, but Leland? he's not. He's not a Schwarzenegger. No. Ken Marshall. Yeah. Yeah. He, he is Wonderbread. He is Wonderbread. He's not, he's like, not he's pretty <laughs> And I he's thought, 80s fit. He's 80s fit. He looks like me at 11 years old. Like I thought. I thought well, this... he, what he looks like is like Luke Skywalker halfway to Han Solo with a beard. Like yeah, he almost yeah, yeah, got yeah. to Han, but he didn't. And he if also you took asked, them and kind of squished that way them. To, yeah, exactly. And then they slapped a little bit of beard on him. Be like, give him some facial hair. Huge. How about spray that on. hair? It's spray. When on. do I start getting chest hair like that? Never, uh, pull you're up. gonna die. You're gonna die a hairless freak. <laughs> so I, I thought, feel like you're wearing a sweater under that suit. I thought uh, in the 1990s and the 1980s there was this comic book character called Kroll the Conqueror. Hold on a second. Okay, cool. Because I was what, about to correct you. In my brain, <laughs> the, the whole time I was coming, I was concocting. I was like, what are the? We could watch the shitty He Man. We could watch like Commando and Predator, and we could oh. watch. You know what I mean? And we could watch the Cone. rundown. We could watch Conan. The Rock. He was yeah. listing all these in our chat. Barbarians. I was reading them all, being like, "What the fuck are these guys talking about?" And Kalen's like, "What about Rock? The Rock? Dwayne the Rock Johnson?" <laughs> I'm like, "What the He's fuck a are, you guys, are okay. you guys talking so, about?" So, so what had happened was, I only realized this a couple days ago. Also, so I could have come into this st- not still not knowing this very easily. There was an '80s comic book. And a couple movies that do fit the criteria called Cull the Conqueror. 
cold. Yeah, it's a, com- it's a comic. Yeah, it's a comic, and they made a movie in the early 2000s, and it looks goddamn awful, and I want to watch it real I bad. didn't know they had a movie. <laughs> it's from, like, 2001 or something. It's got, like, well, the guy who plays This is also my Cole. job on the podcast is to, like, identify mistakes, make sure that everybody knows that they're talking bullshit, yes. and then call everybody out on it. It's got Kevin Sorbo and Tia Carrera. I'm watching it tomorrow. Yeah. Oh God. <laughs> aren't they both? Aren't they both like semi canceled now for their views on the world? <laughs> Kevin Sorbo definitely is. Tia Carrera, I think, who was like pseudo canceled like a long time ago, like just for oh. being an idiot. But Kevin Sorbo is like actively <clears throat> anti uh, anti vax, like right wing weirdo. Um. Yeah, but I mean, there was like a time where anti-vax wasn't that crazy until COVID happened, and then everybody was like, now you're insane. <laughs> you, <laughs> if you're anti-vax, you're insane. How uh, dare you question modern medicine? Yeah, yeah. you're going you're gonna to get the super hit, the COVID, COVIDs. Um, Seriously, though, get back to it. But my history basically is, I watched it yesterday i didn't do the thing that i normally do where i watch it while i'm like the day of while i'm like working around my lunch break i last night i was like you know what work's been real busy i'm gonna watch this fucking movie over here and you know what of all the films i've seen i can definitely not put this in the big beefy boy category but it's more like a labyrinth or a uh, dark crystal labyrinth yeah yeah. And that's yeah. that's the kind of movie it is for me, really. One of those, you know what I mean? It's, yeah, but it's, it's also a cult, beat it's a cult beat. classic. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's also a beat for beat a Star Wars. Like it's basically just it, it, trying exactly. to be a Star Wars. It's and also, it came out the same year, and it didn't stand a chance. I'm gonna get this out of the way real fast because Steve hates it when I do this normally. But I'm gonna throw him a bit. Apparently, of I hate everything Jason it's, does. He does hate episode. everything. We, that's why we're the perfect foil for one another. I'm like uh, I, I'm like Paula Abdul. He's like, uh, he's, uh, no, I'm like Randy Jackson. Kalen's like Paul Abdul. And, and I'm Simon, Steve no matter what happens. Simon I guess. Cowell. Yeah. <laughs> We're okay. What, I'm, what, I'm, what are you going to say? Listen. And then I'll, I'll be like, oh, terrible, terrible, <laughs> absolutely terrible. You're god awful. Put your head in some bread. You're an idiot sandwich. I know that's Gordon Ramsay, but it's the same idea. This movie was clearly the inspiration. For The Legend of Zelda, Ugh. Final Fantasy 1, and Final Ugh. Fantasy 2. Started Japan, already. Japan said, <laughs> Japan really went out there and said, whoa, whoa that is exactly shit. what should Amazing. be a video game. <laughs> and then, in the year of our Lord, 2004, I think, I sent this song to you earlier, uh, Aaron, but there's a song in Final Fantasy 12. I did listen to it, and you, I. It, it, that is yeah. th- that yeah. is literally jacked from the one of the it, parts of the the score of this movie, and and I'll, it is. I'll send it to the well, chat later. So Jason was on TikTok while watching the movie, and he heard the sound, and he went, "Yeah, ding, ding, ding. Ding. <laughs> hold on a minute." Let's it's because it's James Final Horner, though. Fantasy. James Horner is, you know, may he rest in many, many pieces. Oh my god! Did he get blown up? <laughs> no, yes, he he did he, get blown did. up. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wait, back. Okay. Wait, what? James Warner is dead. Yeah, he is. But he's also he was incredible. So. Uh, okay. And he also died in a, a crashing his own tiny little plane. So yeah, yeah he, he did. did. Yeah. We are in the body of the text now. Am I not allowed to be? Can I not say terrible things? Do you I can need say to be terrible no, things. No, that's <laughs> the truth, though. Yeah, it is the truth. Yeah. Just but also, he was amazing. Like he, he, he was some of the best music in cinema. Titanic, He's one of the, man. Like it's, yeah. it goes on. Like, Alien. <laughs> he was a James Cameron like staple for a lot of his movies in the eighties and early nineties. Yeah, absolutely. To the was. end of the nineties, yeah. 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 I'll give you a rundown and of the rules. Kind of cute. Men in black. Men in black. Yes. Yeah. I, yeah. That's how I saw the well, banger theme. I saw a picture of him before he died, obviously, and I was like, you know what? For an older gentleman, I would give him a tiny little smooch. <laughs> he's a he's a cutie. He's a cute old man. A little, tech, tech. A little yeah. tiny little smooch. Um, a silver box. Basically, yeah. the rules are as such: don't be racist, uh, don't be homophobic, don't be transphobic, don't come out with i'm the opposite of all those things don't come out wait are you listing just don't be an asshole you just say don't be an asshole i'm giving you the rules for twitch don't yuck people's yums don't yuck people's yums don't pull your nipples out that's a big one that's a perfect that's a perfect that's a 
perfect statement. Don't yuck people's yums. Have you never heard yeah. that before? No. You can use that. I live by that, friend. Yes. Um, I like it. And But you're allowed to swear, so feel free to swear. Just don't say the N-word, and we're good. I'm kind don't of polite. It. I don't really, I don't really curse too much. <laughs> I feel like you're really making it seem like our guest is a horrible person by having to give him the, these rules. I know, we've never given them. I'm going to try my hardest not to be sexist and racist and transphobic. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I was doing a bit, okay? I know that Aaron is a salt of the earth. He's a gentleman and a scholar. The uh, swell guy. I basically should have just said you can swear, just don't. I'm alright. I mean, Give my regards to the fam. I will, we miss you. We love you. Come for dinner. That was good. <clears throat> All right. I guess this is the true beginning of the show now that we've all said when we we saw it for the first time. So let's start at the beginning. Two nations on a planet, the planet known of, known as Kral, are getting ready for a marriage ceremony. But little do they know, uh, approaching their planet is a giant castle that flies the through beast. space. The beast! I've got a question the beast about castle. this. Yeah. Do you, okay, yeah. so in the in the mid '90s, I would go to um, like yard sales and buy old, like old toys from people's basements. Yeah. And there was this playset that I swore was the fucking Black Fortress from this movie. Are you sure was, it wasn't the He-Man playset? It was, it was Castle likely Grayskull. Castle Grayskull. It wasn't yeah. Castle Grayskull. <laughs> yeah, it looked yeah. like a fucking tree that you could open. And you, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa! It was That's... Castle Tree Skull. Was it? Was it? Was it? Um, uh, Kevin Costner, Robin Hood tree set. Oh, uh, it might have been. Might have oh been. snap! I remember that set. It That's been. crazy. Yeah. I was gonna Let's... say I looked up crawl toys and I didn't recognize any of them. And they, they, they there was there were not a lot. Pretty were bad. Not like they were just yeah, the shitty were. like Star Wars. I mean, this movie ones, lost but... so much money, guys. Like it, it made it made no money. And I, I assume it probably eventually, like twenty years later. Finally, there was some accountant who was like, like "Good news, folks! Crawl finally made its money back. Here's a five dollar check for everybody involved. Half of them are dead." <laughs> Do you have the uh, the information on that, Steve? Because I was curious. This movie is a pretty uh, so good looking movie. I couldn't find an exact number of what the budget was, but it was somewhere between thirty. 30. 30 and 45 million is like the the number yeah. that I could find and like it seemed like there were different numbers it only made 17 million in box yeah. office and yeah. what it made was between 15 and 17 and like that is yeah. abysmal right like you're like everybody involved is like oh god I'm gonna lose my fucking boats all my boats That's are gonna like get a 70 million dollar <laughs> movie making back like 30 million by today's standards yes which is pretty fucking yeah. gross. Or like uh, Black Adam. Yeah. <laughs> it's like Black Adam. No. But that was like... There's, there's not going to be a Black man. Adam 2. Sorry. Did, did we not like Black Adam? I never I found... saw it, but it, what? It, it, it didn't make any money, so I assume it's... No, I'm joking. I just don't care about that movie. I mean, I like that Pierce Brosnan's in it. I kind of want to watch it just for that. He alone. does an awesome job. He hasn't been job. in anything in a while. And he does an awesome as job. As somebody who he... saw the movie, Steve, I I saw it in the theaters. That's like... just it. Everybody was like, see this movie in theaters. I you have like, to. Boom. Nah, big, it'll be fine. Huge. I like superhero dumb movies anyway. And then I didn't care for the movie. And then I saw Avatar in theaters. Uh, and I was like, if I hadn't seen this fucking Avatar movie in theaters i would feel the same way i felt after black adam where i was like i should have seen that thing in theaters so the moral of the story is jason was like masturbating all over the bar we went to that bar afterwards and jason just couldn't stop masturbating and i was like jason you have to stop you have to stop doing this you're gonna throw us out and jason was like at least hang into the bathroom no avatar 2 is amazing (laughs) and i was like stop it these are half truths so i should go see it what you're telling (laughs) you should see it specifically in uh high frame rate that okay. blew and I will fucking, say you shouldn't. <laughs> blew my fucking mind. I'm going to give you guys the truth. That's something I haven't even told Jason yet. There was a point about 25 minutes into the movie where I thought to myself, would it be very rude of me to stand up and tell my friend, one of my best friends, Jason, one of my best friends, Cam, I have to leave because the frame rate is hurting my oh, brain. Yes. <laughs> I can't be here anymore. <laughs> right, I, I have to leave. You, you had the exact opposite where the frame rate was like, broke your brain. Uh, Kaylin, you, you saw... guys both wear glasses. Yeah, you just, you, James Cameron is perfection and you need to get your eyes fixed. I had, I had three <laughs> glasses on over my glasses and I, I loved it. It felt like I was in VR sometimes. 
I also have a lazy eye, which like disrupts the 3D, which was already an issue. And then on top of that was the frame rate. And I was like, you should have seen it. I started screen foaming X. with the mouse. Yeah. Thing. Like, There's something wrong with me. I gotta get out of here. Screen X. I would, have, I, I would have preferred to see it just raw dog it with no glasses, nothing, just oh, snap. a movie. Christ. I've never Sorry, heard somebody yeah. saying going to a, a movie with, in non 3D as raw dog. <laughs> when I go into a grocery store without a mask on, I say I'm raw dog. Raw dog Jurassic Park right now. I'm going to go raw dog the air in that fucking liquor store right now, boys. I've heard it. Um, there's air in Toronto that you can breathe? No. You know, you were here. You were here in the in the summer. You oh, know. so many dispensaries. What a wonderful place! I had a blast. <laughs> <laughs> One in every corner. But I mean, the only every thing I, uh, the only thing I recommend to visitors is never raw dog the air in Toronto. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you remember that guy? You remember that completely naked man just up and down the street Fucking when we were in China. Chinatown? We, it yeah, was we Jason is thinking to himself, "Which one?" Because that <laughs> happens a lot. <laughs> Uh, he looked like though, a surfer. This was actually different than than the normal guy with his dick out thing. This was just a dude walking up and down uh, Queen Street, like over by where like all the stores are, like all the shopping on Queen is. But after the Mac- after the McDonald's, the that's Spadina. You know, Queen runs all the way across Toronto. Listen, give me another intersection. The shopping Spadina <laughs> Spadina area. Okay, okay. There was a building. There was buildings. Uh, oh, this yeah. dude ah, was head to, he was head to toe naked. He had the beard and facial hair of a caveman. Um, nice. He had a giant rod on him, and he was just throwing things around. Is that code for boner? Well, I couldn't. No, his... I didn't look directly. No, at he, it was flopping. <laughs> it was flopping. It, it was, was soft, he, but it was he, also a in big charge of rod. the situation. Yeah. He was a shower and a grower. And a grower. Was it, it was the middle of the day, yes? <laughs> middle of the day. Jerry. We were, yeah, we, he was on drugs, and I felt really bad for him. We, we so. were going to the, uh, the fucking Jacob, Jacob's a shoe head, so we were going to the Nike shop. Aaron was just trying to find the next dispensary so he could re-up his epic high. Jacob, of, uh, Jacob's a sneakerhead? He's a, yeah, he's Jacob, a he is, yeah, yeah. He's looking for I Yeezys. Mean, <laughs> he's he's a lot more quiet thing. about it now that uh, Kanye slash Ye has, you know... It fucking just spiraling, double down spiraling. Insanity. Started playing Yahtzee over and over again, and not <laughs> stopping. Yeah. Uh, okay. Sorry. Let's get back onto the rails. topic of crawl. That's the thing we say. Yeah. Rails. Yeah. Um, Off the rail. So tell me more about trains. Yeah. <laughs> a giant castle is floating toward, or not, you don't know it's a castle, but you know, I also get on Jason's case about saying that things rip other things off a lot. Like he's like, this was ripped off from this. This was ripped off from that. And I'm like, stop. It's called homage. Sometimes things are not ripped off, but this movie is directly ripping off the intro to star Wars. It's there's no way to like get around like space balls. Actually paying homage the same to, Star no, no. Wars. All right, I get what you're doing, but shut up for a second. Spaceballs <laughs> literally did the same thing before this movie as a joke, doing like the extended sequence of a ship moving past the screen for. Sl- I think you have that backwards. Movie. Star Wars ripped off Spaceball. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Mel Sorry, Brooks actually came up with corrected. Spaceballs, yeah. and then George Lucas was like, "Man, I love that." And they were hanging out. Like, Banging rails that, off yeah. the rails. And then he I saw that out. scene. He saw the scene where yogurt, the yogurt is is going space balls the lunchbox, space balls the t shirt, space balls the flamethrower. And George Lucas was like, "Oh my god, I'm gonna be rich. Oh, I could make a lot of money off of Star Wars." And then it turned out that Mel Brooks was actually inspired by Akira Kurosawa and uh, and the good, okay, the bad, stop. The we have to stop this. This is like a never ending bit of an episode. So. <laughs> We have to start actually talking about the movie, guys. This might be one of our best episodes yet. Oh, I'm just happy to be here. Crawl. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, the movie begins. We see this this rock going towards a planet, and then we're introduced by a narrator saying a bunch of mumbo jumbo about these two nations joining together by the marriage of a prince and a princess. Just and like in real life. He all, but he also <laughs> mentions, like, as though it's the grandest statement that, and their son will be the ruler of the galaxy. And you're like, what the <laughs> fuck? It's, how do they know quickly. that? <laughs> like, and Freddie that? Jones could read the back of a cereal box and it would say, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. Very good narrator, but also, like, 
the the information you're that you're given is like that seems problematic that like they know that they're like if we join our two nations then one day our grandchild will rule the galaxy <laughs> it's the about, worst prophecy i've ever heard in my i life, kept thinking but, about yeah. how like they know all this information based on prophecy and they just have to get rid of the slayers and well there's a lot like... of magic in this world and you know as we get into it like everything is magical like yeah. every single thing that happens is, is like their magic. swords that are not lightsabers that two are suns magical, one shadow are lightsabers <laughs> not lightsabers <laughs> no they're light darts light spears light, that, light they, they, the, they steal the sound bite from star wars for they, that? A, cu- a couple of them maybe they're very similar for sure well, when they hit so the, the thing wall, about when they hit walls they make like when you sh- you know like in old war movies when there's yeah. like the ricochet sound <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, um so the thing about sound is that every uh movie production studio has its own sound library but then lucas uh film has its massive sound lock library that it has like you know a pay-in that you can buy into in order to use oh, okay. that sound, sound library yeah. so you know you hear sound effects all the time in tons of different movies um yeah. if you watch anything by spielberg if you listen with like a fine-tuned ear you can hear star wars sound effects everywhere and it's because star wars sound effects are so iconic in a lot of ways that you know the sound of the millennium falcon be like when it's like trying to start up and like you can hear that across like every spielberg movie or the wilhelm scream which actually had wilhelm in the second star wars and he dies and falls off a thing and he imitates his own wilhelm scream on the bridge yeah, in on this one yeah his in name the is fortress ah! his name's brent right Burke. he's the sound designer he used it as a joke and he put it into all the star wars movies and then when he dies yeah he, he falls off and does does the imitation of it and he does a pretty yeah. good job he does it was, yeah. i loved it ah! uh but that's also in like that's every Wilhelm scream Wilhelm, Wilhelm. Also, Wilhelm is a technically a correct Wilhelm. Philheim. Because my last it's name is Philip. Because yeah. my last it's name is Philip. So Brecken the dick. <laughs> oh, <Jesus. laughs> oh, God. Um, so <laughs> they realize that they have to get married. Or not, they, they don't realize, but they, the, the two kings are like. <laughs> I, I don't know if I agree about this marriage between my prince and that princess. So, and like the princess, horribly dubbed, by the way. What the fuck is going on? Well, she sounded too young. She was seventeen, right? And so they got like some thirty-eight-year-old to just is that voice that over. Part? But yeah, she was yeah. also she was also British. Like the yeah. original actor was British, and they didn't for some reason the studio was like. People nope. think British people are evil, so yeah. we gotta. They're, they're always the bad guys. Seen guy Star Wars? Yeah, yeah. they're always. <laughs> Everybody's the bad like, you may fire when ready. <laughs> so we gotta baddies? make her American. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, I don't know which was which. I don't know if it's that she sounded too young or that she sounded too British, but they replaced her in order to. More, they wanted a more voice. mature sounding voice. She was seventeen. She sounded like right. a kid, right? Yeah. But they probably also wanted to make it more palatable for American audiences because they're like, that's what the money is. But yeah. it's, little do they know, it's like, no, we should have made her have a like Asian accent. That's where the money is. Did um <laughs> did Lisette Anthony go on to do anything else? I'm looking at her I'm looking at her IMDB because I was curious about her because she has a face that seems like she should have become like, just a bunch of terrible British TV. Like just a heartthrob a, oh, kind of character. Oh, wow. BBC like a Phoebe yeah. uh what's her face? But yeah, yeah. Uh, Phoebe, what's her face? Yeah. Oh, she was in Look Who's Talking Now. What I didn't she? know that. Yeah, hey, that's a good was. movie. That is a good movie. Let's do the look. Let's do all. I the mean, look who's she's talkings. still she's still working to this day. It's true. She's on yeah. um she's on some show. Doctors must be British. Again, uh, she was house? only seventeen, so she's just like a normal adult. Yeah. 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 Um. But yeah, very she's very pretty, pretty but. At the same time, I, I, I don't know. Like I, I would be interested to hear what her original voice sounded like. Imagine she was like, Oh, yeah, but you could do we all get married then. Is that right? Or what? Like Maybe Adele, she sounded terrible. You never know. Like yeah. when Adele sings, she's like a songstress of her generation. And when she talks, she's like, Did I right? I was in the club. I was in the pub then, yeah. Adele well, luckily, is fucking amazing. You, you do not bring blasphemy to her name. I did. That's what she said. She's got fucking Cockney accent, bro. 
I'm not. Yeah, I'm not big fine. on the Adele. I'm not. I'm not. Nah, I think nah. Adele's fine. Uh, I, I also. <laughs> I also am like. She's fine. <laughs> it doesn't really matter because this character is only really predominant in this first scene and the end scene, and then there's like a like sprinklings of stuff throughout where she's just like. Just confused. <laughs> just confused in an eye or in a mouth. Where yeah, Krell is like, I can take any form I please. I and like Krull you're just the like the planet. The... He's the I, beast. I'm gonna call yeah. the alien Krell because he why is the, the beast. Yeah, the beast. The main the weird beast. His name was John Krull. <laughs> yeah. His name his name's the beast. He's made up of twenty six different personalities one of them wait all played by james back of wait a second <laughs> yeah. uh, no, also just... movie title shout out four minutes 30 seconds oh sweet what does that mean four minutes the, the not immediately drop. where they're like welcome to the planet crawl <laughs> you're like oh it was when they were doing it? that little so the the intro of the planet castle thing was mm. forever and then they do that little kind of um What's it called when you explain what happens? Exposition. Preamble? Yeah, yeah, exposition. Yeah, yeah, They do the little exposition thing. And they say some, 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 crawl, some, some, some. Four minutes, 30 seconds. All right. Well, I always Two believe you, Kaylin, because I don't, I don't look for it myself. You know what I did look for, though? How many yeah. travel sequences there were of them, like, dun, 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 dun. <laughs> so they get to pay for those slide man. I actually I, had, I, 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 I had... marked it, but I'll, we'll talk about it later. But I marked it. I okay, marked. cool. Mm. Um, okay, so they, the two royal families come together and they meet in this giant styrofoam castle and they <laughs> decide you know like this is fine i guess the, the, the king who's not really okay with it and then the other king comes in and be like my son's here to marry your daughter and the, the son is like and it's like his teeth are glistening or whatever. you're like okay so this is but then you have a little moment where the two of them get together and you're like do they know each other i thought this was like a weird arranged marriage but apparently they're already in love okay that's kind of cool they have close by as summer as homes as well. you know they're multi- mega wealthy <laughs> you know? yeah it, in, at this point, I'm starting to realize like this isn't just a fantasy. This is this is a science fantasy. It's like a Star Wars where, where like the guards don't have like big clunky chainmail armor and stuff. They have like weird, sleek, polished red like crimson armor. I'm like Ooh, space Final Fantasy. This is kind of cool. Of yeah. mm. Also, you know, Return of the Jedi came out the same year. They had some pretty cool polished red armor guys in that as well. Um, and they have their their ceremony and the ceremony in th- in theory is kind of cool I, I like it yeah. but in terms oh, the fire of thing present yeah i like it i like it a lot i think it's cool they don't but, even really tell you how important it is you know like it gets yeah, them well it's it's basically hours. like it's like proof that your hearts are literally entwined with like the fire of love of like if you were to put your hand into that fire into that water after the fire has been put out you would pull your hand out and no fire would come out. That's what I assume would happen yeah, right? if you didn't yeah. feel the true love. What would happen if you people. stuck your hand in straight up uh, lava, though? It's fine. Fa- and he holds it there. Let's, like, yeah. Let's, yeah let's, I think he'd like snatch, but it's. Let, let's deal with this one magical moment before we leap <laughs> to another magical moment. Uh, <laughs> it's the rock climbing that gets me. The free climbing they all do is still. But impressive. he also. The, the <laughs> actor did all that himself. Breath all of the of wild. Yeah. All of it. He's, he actually earned a small amount of respect in his stunts because he does them so, all. So, like, in the ceremony, he has a torch and he, he puts it into basically like a well of water. But it's like this very ceremonious looking well in a huge, you know, white pearly room with a million people watching. And he says something like, I place fire to water and give my heart's fire to the one that I would have as my true love. And then she says, I take fire from water only for the one that my heart feels fire for some it's some shit like that i don't know <laughs> and then when she, yeah. that, when was she pulled, that was verbatim that was verbatim and then she pulls her hand out and her hand like like has a big flame in it and everybody's like oh shit like it, it's just like a proof that their love is real i guess you can and add like, fire later right if I'm like, <laughs> yeah we'll fix it in and post like, fix it in post yeah you we know, have like, we have a guy in a chair yeah good good 
a lot of people I, I would assume would probably get like too logistic on like ask too many questions about it but like that's that's the kind of representation of like magic that i think is cool where it's like only if this one thing is sealed does this magic work and if if it isn't sealed then the magic doesn't work the thing that fails for me is that like you don't get an example of that not working right so like you you don't know that, that doesn't just happen every time <laughs> i guess just skeleton hand comes up <laughs> yeah like you are not uh, destined to be together. Yeah. In fact, I steal your souls. Or just melts. Like, even melts. just like the hand coming up and the fire not being there. Like she yeah. and she like goes. Well, it's like green really fire, bad. like green bad. Yeah, ugh, gross. <laughs> and it smells so like burning you want to see garbage. Worthy like, candidate ugh. first. Is that what you're saying? This this smells like burnt hair. Um. But, you know, it's it's cool. I like it. I think that's pretty cool. And it, it gave me an idea of how the world works. It's like one thing that I really enjoyed about this movie is the lore that they attempted to build into the storytelling. They don't they don't talk about it at all. And there's so much magic, you know, so yeah. it's just and, and that's like Star Wars, right? Like yeah. the original Star Wars, the 77 Star Wars, like they do that a lot. And like yeah. you're left wanting to understand more. And that's something that I, I think works. There's a ton of examples in this movie of how because they keep doing it over and over yeah, again. You're just, like, all right there are too many magics yeah, i need play, to know play, play the day magic like what everybody is knows ergo is he a wizard is he a druid is he a shapeshifter he's a he's, he's a the magnificent so that's you know um magnificent sorry jason you, i forgot that you're supposed to be leading this and i no I'm it's fine kind of like i wasn't gonna do i wasn't gonna here. do plot and order and uh, you took the reins on that and it's all good in the hood what were you gonna well say, i Kevin? just thought it was important to get that chunk out of the way because it's the quest beginning you know i agree i love the magic aspect yeah. now we're into the home alone of it i'm gonna i'm gonna say something i'm gonna say some princess bride yeah that's fits the, fits the rats this. yeah yeah fits in this whole Although that of the movies I mentioned at the top of the show that I haven't seen The Princess Bride since I was literally like too young to remember things. Like I haven't read. Oh, you got to really? watch that again. Wow. I've yeah. seen that's it, one. I've seen it that's a few one... times, but I haven't seen it like since my brain fully formed. You know what I mean? Like it was always right. on well, when I was a kid. Jason, that's one that you should probably watch again as an adult because you'll. It's still good. Like, I do, that is a film. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I do love Andre the Giant. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody want a peanut? Do, do I have a question about um, scenery and backdrops and shit in this before I forget. Sure, yeah. Twenty-three what? different stages. Well, just throwing that out there. The part specifically twenty. Wow. Twenty-three. Because there were there lot? was a lot yeah. that was clearly the double O seven man, the big dog. You know, back then especially. There was a there's a lot that's clearly on sound stages, like the the swamp. You know, like any like foresty stuff. Well some forest stuff like obviously inside the fortress <clears throat> but the mountain part really i couldn't figure out where it ended they're in, in england or something they're in the uk somewhere okay so rolling yeah. hills yeah so is when he's so there's that scene where he's he's running across a ridge between two like giant pillars and then the background is just beautiful yeah how'd they get that shot how'd that's they get what that i want to know in 1991 how did they... That's what I'm saying. Did they have a helicopter? Like, was it the whole budget for this movie oh, to get that one shot? I did like... watch it on. I did watch it uh, in 1080p. So, like, it has been touched up many times over the years. So, looks it great. Pops. Yeah, it does but, look. It does look beautiful. The same. It does. I, I yeah, couldn't yeah. figure out if it was like enhanced. There it wasn't a matte painting. Definitely not. But I couldn't figure out if it was enhanced by like a picture in the background. Oh no, he's he's walking across that. That's, yeah, I I think there. I've said this before, but like film. If you have the original print and you can, you know, clean it, it it's like the best form of Chris. photography. It's the best yeah. form of photography. Any digital film is, I mean, it's getting better and better every year, but film. The only reason it looks bad is because of compression. Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 Like, and the problem yeah. now with digital film, I find that the CGI almost feels like a different like layer. Like it's yeah. like, it doesn't melt into the background. Like it did when you watched it on an old, like 480p fucking TV or the shitty old projectors in theaters. Now that we have, well, the I mean, the way to think about HD it is projectors, like, it's imagine I drew a line with a pencil and then imagine I drew a line digitally. You zoom what about in. A pen? All right, fine. Replace the pencil with a pen. What about, no, no, no. What about <laughs> replace the digital with a pen? No, no, that's the, the, the point of the analogy. In this analogy, dildo. Okay, so <laughs> imagine I draw a, a line with a pen, and I draw a line with a digital pen. 
I zoom in on the pen, keep zooming in, keep zooming in, keep zooming in until I get to the roughness of the paper. That line is going to be straight, but I'll already have met a point where digital degradation is apparent pixelation yeah. on, on that digital line, right? Like that's what digital versus like analog is. And that's what film is. You're burning an image onto a chemical. So it's creating a, a sharp line. It's not creating a digital representation. It's not made of, of cubes, is. man. It's not made of cubes. It's not cubes, man. It's like a line burned in acid. <laughs> exactly what it is. <laughs> wow. That you gave so us a pretty good. Flammable. That's a deep lesson for fucking. And that's the history of film. Ten thirty at night. Um, fantastic. It's 11, so I'm in the future. Yeah, you've answered my question. Um, I do feel like this movie should have been part of my childhood because of of these things. I I don't get how some movies like stick with us and then some movies just i'm sure i saw this movie it's like it's almost impossible there were 17 movies one in 1983 you know what i mean <laughs> how many times can we watch the Berman commando how many <laughs> times can we watch no how many times can we watch Ninja Turtles one right no but then yeah, watch turtles but have Bert, the but have the man. previews have the Who previews. roger rabbit the previews before Ninja Turtles, and in your head, it's like, yeah, I've seen those movies. I've seen, I've seen Suburban Commando. Then you watch Suburban Commando. New and... Line Cinema comes up. Yep. What's you... your movie, right? Yeah. And uh, but then you actually watch Suburban Commando in the '90s, late '90s, as a like teenager, and you're like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> it was, it was all right. It was fine. I was frozen <laughs> today. Uh, uh, maybe let's talk about Crawl because I don't. Yeah, know what the fuck I don't know. About. <laughs> How did we get here? Um, how about the fact that it's called the glaive when it is not, in fact, no, a glaive? No, a glaive is like a small <laughs> sword. No, a glaive is a small sword on the end of a pole arm. That's what a glaive is. Right. It's like a spear, but like a it, spear. instead of it being a spear, it's like a sword on the end, and you use it like a fucking axe, but at a distance. That's what a glaive is. And Just ceremonial. Reason, Just yeah, the reason I know this is because I've memorized every medieval weapon ever made. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm just kidding. I haven't yet, but I do find it annoying that they called it a glaive instead of just coming up with like that could have been what the crawl that, that could have been Maybe crawl. Crawl. Yeah. The crawl, crawl star. Crawl Why star. not call the planet planet Pistifer and then that is the fucking glaive. Like that, like or call the you know like why the planet fuck glaive. Glaive? He comes up with yeah. Pistifer and the next thing I say he's gonna say is stupid. So. <laughs> We yeah. get through the scene. So he goes on his adventure. The the slayers attack. They fuck everything up. He gets stabbed. This old. Man... I have a quick question about that. Do you think the horses had a hard time walking on the when the the doors get busted down and then the horses bust in and the doors are kind of like unstable, wobbly. Like, do you think horses have good like center of balance or whatever? Uh, yes. And I have an even bigger question. Where did they get all of those horses? Because they had them the minute they landed. So, <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> like, space horse. Like, space horses. One of the unfortunate realities of like Hollywood up to a certain point is that they like animals didn't really have rights on sets. They would just bring them there oh, and like the make them the work. Oh, the part with the Clydesdales until... or the fire mares was. Well, actually, I, I looked into that a little bit because I I wanted to know how they accomplished it and it wasn't as bad as i thought i no, thought they like, were they were well trained actually okay. yeah. yeah i was like yeah. did they did they light these horses feet on fire <laughs> okay <laughs> are they really are they really flying like how yeah. did they <laughs> did they throw horses across this canyon <laughs> like a catapult with a horse with catapult? a cat <laughs> um but <laughs> yeah, they, they they had trained horses to run on uh treadmills to to do it but the one thing that like caught my attention was like when it does the close up kind of low angle of the feet moving yep. there's flame that's coming across the screen but also it looks like it's going from underneath the hooves yep. and like that was the one effect that i was like how the fuck did they do that because it looked real i was like did they make these horses <laughs> run on fire did they put fire well, horses, in horses? those are probably fire uh retardant they didn't do it <laughs> by the way just you know they did not light fire. They're very fire. expensive Clydesdale. Yeah, they did not set them on fire. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. So, so after, so this man comes and he's sort of like, if you, uh, you know, there's a danger out there, uh, you're gonna have to get the, the old, fucking boomerang. 
Yeah, Obi Wan Kenobi shows up, whose name is Eve 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 um, so that's, he comes. That's Freddie Jones, the he's ba- old one. He's basically like, let's let's get it going. But first, we have to go do the first dungeon. Um, it's the fire yeah. dungeon, and you have to get the boomerang, uh, which is usually like the third dungeon in most other things. <laughs> like this mystical weapon, but he gets it. Like it wasn't hard for him to he barely, get that. The that climbing it. was the hard part, and the this part. This is my. Yeah, the the, Zel- the first the travel, the first Obama? travel. Uh, yeah. This is my fr- sorry. This is my first travel tick where I'm like, oh, traveling yeah. across the <laughs> and then him climbing the. How can we kill ten minutes? Yeah, Peter Jackson was like, you know what I'll do? I'll just make Kroll put the Lords of the Ring in it. Yeah, where he's like, we've got to go and get you. The glaive of crow. Dun, 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 <laughs> ding, ding, ding. And so, they go. And he gets an it. Weapon. It's just a myth. He doesn't even that have to throw right. it like he a snake or anything. He doesn't, like, what the well, that's what I was wondering about. He doesn't. It he, does, he does battle a, an element that in Zelda, every Zelda game has rock, a rock that comes down and tries to take you out. He does deal with those the, the landslide rocks. Oh, the landslide, yeah. From Celtic. Oh, man. Some of those are flying at you, and he's just so calm. Like, that would just, <laughs> that, that would brain you. Like, that would be the end of your day. Like I think that I, I forgot that that happened because I'm so desensitized to, like, action now that a rock falling is, like, an inconvenience <laughs> and not an action. And there's no, there's no, there's no like, logic behind it. It's just, oh, yeah. shit, rocks are falling. Rocks are stop. falling. Yeah. And then they stop. It's fine. It's but also, like doesn't the old man kind of get all the way up there, too? He's like, good work. No, he waits. He has he a little fire. He's chilling. But then we get a 19-minute okay. montage of him climbing this fucking, free climbing yeah. this mountain. Because he did it. Ken Marshall re-climbed that <laughs> in costume. They wanted to showcase it. Awesome. Yeah. Also, Apparently the sword got stuck and he almost fell a couple times. Oh, a couple times. Yeah. I think after the first time they'd be like, cut, no, no <laughs> more. Take the sword off. <laughs> if you fall, this movie's fucked. He's like, no, the 80s, I do we it. do not care about you. You are not maybe they filmed, maybe they, yeah, Maybe they shot that first and they're like, who cares? If he falls, we'll just get the other guy. Right? <laughs> Nobody cares about Ken Marshall. Um, so my main gripe with this is that he gets... The blade, the glaive, too early. Like he gets it way too early in the movie, and it's yeah, very he, easy. He We're gets it, and, and like he puts his hand into lava, which is like okay, magic again. Pulls it out. It's covered in like brownie mix or whatever, and it all falls off to reveal the glaive underneath it. So and shiny. I'm like, I'm like, oh man, this is like Luke getting his lightsaber. It, it was a switchblade glaive. Also, that way, part like, made little... me laugh. Like I laughed out loud when he goes like, and it goes. Psk. What about? I didn't laugh out loud, but I did say, "Oh man, good thing he wasn't ha- he didn't have that pointed at his like jugular or like yeah. his he, wrist or like something. Like, like just cut the oh, whole arm open, and he's like, oh, oh, <laughs> where he's looking yeah. at it real close and it just fucking blinds him. Or he like looks into it like yeah. like an idiot can do his eyeball. Okay, um, so he got it too early, and then he doesn't use it until the last." sequence right like that's a whole yeah. movie of him not using the fucking glaive the he time. could have literally defeated everybody instantly the entire movie it would have been pointless yeah. and the reason that it's annoying is because he goes down and talks to uh Evir and is like so i got it and he's and he <laughs> says okay but you can't use it ever until Don't. you know when you ever. really need to use never, it never 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 and he's never. like well how will i know when to use it you'll know Oh, you'll know. Okay, when but when? The final boss. You'll know, you'll know. And the director you're... is going to say, hey, yeah. the whole movie. That. <laughs> the whole movie, it. I'm like, now, use it now, use it now. Use it now. Use it now. Like, I would use it now if I had it. I'd be like, use it. Like, Here come all these slayers. It was like a one time use thing, and then it, like, I don't know, deteriorates or something. But, like, when he does use it, he uses it a bunch. I'm like, why didn't, why couldn't he just keep, use, like, use it from the get go? He uses it anyone, all through the final a... dungeon. Boomerang master too. Like just know yeah. when he questions that. Like this is another like Star Wars thing where Jason. I, I again I hate saying like they they ripped it off, but like this is like they show <laughs> Star Wars. They show him pull the lightsaber out, and you know he trains with it a little bit, and Obi Wan's like it's a it's an elegant weapon from a more civilized age or whatever. They look not as clumsy or random as a blaster. And like he the never youngling used... slayer nine thousand, <laughs> but you know that it's you know that it's <laughs> yeah you know that it's powerful, <laughs> but he never uses it. 
And yeah. in this movie, this guy's got this glaive in his back pocket. The and, ultimate and he, weapon. And he, ne- like, Luke never faces anything like this guy faces throughout his journey. You know, he's, At he's least dealing he's... with all sorts of crazy spiders <laughs> and shit. But he's and got he's... companions to lose. <laughs> That's, <laughs> That's true. true. Keep checking yeah, them he off the list as they go. Yeah. Yeah. He has a list of companions like, oh my god, I've already lost seven men. Oh shit, was that the Emerald Seer? Oh, he well. loses a guy <laughs> in like every fucking scene once he yeah. gets the band yeah. yeah, And he's fine. Like, he doesn't know these people. Right. Like, also, those criminals were lying. They said there was a hundred men there. There's like five of them. There were ten. Where's the other ninety-five? <laughs> I think that was a little bit of a trick. They yeah, they were. Trick they were just trying to rob them. But also, maybe they have the spirit of a thousand men or whatever. <laughs> or whatever. They're, it's all the wives they have back home because they're all like polygamists. That's man. True. But I, Liam Neeson. Thing, <laughs> Liam Neeson. Eight wives. Polly Emmerich. Looks her in the eye and says, "I promise to be true to you, darling." And you, and you, and you. She doesn't, and you, she doesn't you, even hold you, a, a pedal. What is it? Is she, she's not yeah, as pretty. I don't know if I would that. consider his character polyamorous. I think he was just a filthy man. <laughs> he was a pirate. <laughs> had a, a wife ca- in every town. He was a pirate Qui-Gon captain. Jinn can do no wrong. He was a pirate no captain <laughs> who had a wife at every port, as they say. Like yeah. a, it's any port in the like, storm. Not oh. unlike a Navy <laughs> man who has a wife at every port. No, I just have work wives. And they're men. <laughs> and they're men. <laughs> and they're men, so. It's the Navy. When you're underway, it's okay. YMCA. So he gets he gets the glaive, and then they, they start the second quest, right? Jason, like, I think you'll agree. Like, this movie is made up of a million quests. Like, this it whole is. movie is just quest after quest after quest. Not only is it that, but it's like they go to all the biomes you would go to in an RPG video game. Which I like. I do like that a lot, but I at loved the same it. time... That, was, that kept me going I, in a... If this movie... That's the thing that kept me going in Labyrinth and uh, <clears throat> Dark Crystal as well, because I play so many games. I'm just like, mm-hmm. okay, this shit's boring. Get to the next thing. And it gets to the next thing, and I'm like, ooh, for a little while. Wow, there's... <laughs> now it's a swamp. And I know I all the tropes. Swamp. I know all the tropes are going to happen yeah. in a swamp. They're going to have to go canyon. through water. Now it's mountains. They're going to go sand. through water. That the quick sand steam was my up. They're going to go through some quicksand. They're going to go into a forest. There's probably going to be like a some sort of monster that's a plant-based monster. In the 80s, quicksand was everywhere. Everywhere. It was a real they problem. prepared us for quicksand, yeah. and then we find out as adults that scientifically quicksand basically doesn't exist. It exists. It also what? has like, you just, never you killed just, anyone. No, it will float up to like your waist, maybe, if it's deep enough. It's it's just sand and water. And you, also, it, you ex- float. it exists. You're more, more like, likely to drown deep in, in the jungle swamp. Yeah. it's just like, <laughs> oh, like mud? Water. mud? Mud will suck you down, yeah. I've lost boots. They're not coming back. No, um, how many you lose? They're still the, there in prospect. The point yeah. that I was hoping to make w- was that Lord of the Rings has ruined the travel sequence for any movie before it. Yeah, I hate because Lord any of the movie Rings after it has now emulated sequences. the travel sequences of Lord of the Rings. But this movie, it's like static shots of like a river and then like horses like. <laughs> and it's like meant to be exciting like there's like crazy exciting music happening and you're like they're just fucking walking on the horse they're not sprinting or anything and there's no helicopter shot so why did they green screen part of that horse galloping ness mirrors because the fire because horses can't fly and no but there's there's when they do the close-up where it's just like like the headshot or whatever because oh, like the horses could... were on a they're on a treadmill yeah but why not just do a practical like it's harder it's much there. harder to do you lock down a camera and you have a person on a treadmill move like not moving versus getting a fucking jeep and strapping a goddamn camera to it pointing it at a guy better. on a horse it's a lot harder that's why <laughs> yeah Steady the camera um <laughs> Oh, I made a note at one point where I said he better fight slimes in this. Uh, and I was bummed out that he didn't fight slimes, but there was a giant spider, so... I was just going to say, the giant spider. The giant spider. It wasn't fought like a boss, though. It was more like you just got to sneak by it and then sneak away from it. Use yeah, it was the, more like a puzzle. Yeah, use the dust of an elder or whatever the fuck that shit was. That was so weird. Be- also, what was that spider? Was that stop motion? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Or it might have been a puppet, but I'm, I think it was stop it motion. It looked stop mo- like it looked like uh, J- the uh, the weird rickety 
stop motion. It looked like yeah. Jason yeah. and the Argonauts style. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Skeleton and, Army. I'm pretty sure the guy that worked on like the practical effects in this movie worked on a, a ton of others. Like he was like a, a prestige person it that looked, we were able to bring in. It looked awesome. Like the uh, yeah. the way the spiders like uh, t- tentacle tendrils fucking. Yeah legs like it's legs but also like it's face like it's <laughs> oh the, uh, you mean yeah. to say legs or <laughs> you like it because it's nick malay and he did yoda he okay. did the cyclops uh, and he did yoda yeah the cyclops was good too that like yeah. that was some animatronic shit but like they didn't really yeah. have animatronics then uh cam friend of the show sent me a we i watched uh killer clouds from outer space recently oh god and it's, it holds up. It's a really weird, bad like parody. It's a it's a horror comedy. Is what I learned. It holds up to what? Exactly? Holds up to what are they comparing that of to? the era, and it's 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 unironically funny and ironically funny, both hand in hand. But there's a shot where wow. there's a shot where like this this clown is supposed to open up one of the the candy candy cocoons to suck blood, and the guy who like made it who made the special effects just like went to a store. I was like, what am I going to use to do this? So he got a drug a, store. I think it was a drug store. Yeah. So he, <laughs> got, he got a crazy straw. It's cause it'd be funny if a, if a clown used a crazy straw to suck the blood out of a cocoon, uh, made of cotton candy. And also he put balloons inside the face to, to mimic the, the, the look of him sucking. So I imagine that like a lot of the practical shit. He also this, used a douche. To he is a douche. Yes. Fill it with liquid to make it look like the like unfill and fill it to make it look like the thing was going like. And, which which yeah. is just like ingenuity, right? In 1983, yeah. that eye Work was, with what you got. that eye was probably somebody standing behind the actor with a like a thing blinking it with a button. You know what I mean? Like it was probably just like t- like a pair of scissors that were just making the eye go. Uh, so yeah, you can only really see out of one hole too. So he was tripping all over the place all the time, and they had to oh, help him. I just assumed he was yeah. completely blind. Yeah, you could, like, of it. You could I, thought they had, yeah. I thought there was holes in the wrinkles. No, he oh, was he was I pretty much blind. The swamp scene, they actually had to guide him from not falling into the swamp. <laughs> they had him on like a rope, like pulling him. He's like, <laughs> this way, this okay. way. Can we talk about the Cyclops for like one? Bernard Breslau huge segment of this episode yeah let's get into Uh, it so you know he starts the quest they go on to a few quests he meets up people along the one of the cool things about each biome is that he sort of meets like a new person to join his cause and like throughout the movie he's like gaining more people it's not like he's just by himself which is pretty fun and cool and i i like that idea and that's something that has always made me excited in terms of movies uh books and even video games like i think about mass effect the series of mass effect where like you go through the video games and slowly you're building a crew around you and you have these additional characters that you can talk to and you know learn their backstories and you're like wow this is great lore building and that's sort of what they're again attempting to do not in this movie. not unlike the uh prestige rpg series uh from japan pu- made and published by square enix uh final fantasy which I think. I was going to say. Chrono oh, Trigger. you know what? You're right. I forgot Chrono that Mass Effect completely well. ripped off Final oh, Fantasy. In no, the or Legend of Lagaya like... or Legend of Dragoon, no. or Secret of Mana. Sorry, or... I use that as an example because it's very <laughs> cinematic. No, and, and I didn't say this movie predates them all of this. This voice movie predates video games, basically. <laughs> so that's. I what... know, but oh, it, it has its own game, and it's amazing. But we meet this Cyclops character, and at first he's sort of a character in the background. You know, he's he's moving in and amongst the trees, but he's clearly watching them with his one eye. And, you know, the Charlie Buckets <laughs> teacher, the guy from Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, who is confused by Charlie only buying two chocolate bars or whatever. I can't remember his whole tale in that movie, but I remember him being like, oh, yeah, yeah. do the calculations for two bars. He's the comic <laughs> relief. Yeah, but and he's like a shitty wizard or whatever, right? Like yeah. that's kind of what he is. He's like, I can, I'll turn you into a goose, and then he turns himself into a goose. Um, but when you meet the the warlock, or sorry, the cyclops, uh, you don't really learn anything about him that, except that he's maybe a villain. But like, he's so peaceful looking. Every time they show him, he looks like uh, you know that meme of the guy who's like, 
Yeah. Like the wilderness <laughs> like guy. The you know what I'm yeah, talking about? Yeah. yeah. yeah like yeah, he, yeah, he's yeah. like that. So that's like the energy he gives off. And, Secret uh, bro. Yeah. So you, you, you realize as the audience, like he's not bad. He's a good guy. He's trying to help. He's trying to help out. Uh, that and his actions <laughs> are proof of that. That he's he reminds trying, me just of, trying to help. He reminds me of uh, something from like another fantasy movie of like a, a race of peaceful of one-eyed like, creatures <laughs> like <laughs> wrath of the titans maybe oh yeah the, yeah the weird right? like wood bark they, people yeah yeah That's, well no yeah. wrath of the titans they go to the island and covered in cyclops they the old cyclops man and oh right, right, chasing right, right. Around. yeah um but the one thing that like once again and i i'm gonna keep bringing it back to this because i think this is the one strength of the this movie that I, I think it that outweighs everything else is that they do this weird sort of like lore dump on you that is so intriguing and cool. Yeah. Uh, and it's the story of the Cyclopses, which is that they found a deity and they made a deal with the deity yes, to sacrifice awesome. one of their eyes. Yeah. And see the in future exchange, in exchange for one of their eyes, they can see the future, but it was a monkey paw situation where yeah. Yeah the wish was granted to them, but they could only see one point in the future. And that was their, the point of their own death, which is like so cool because if if you really think about that for a minute, you can see the future. You have one eye. Okay. That's a shitty deal, but you know exactly when you, when you're going to die, which would, you can do anything, but it would would make you you use it. Yeah. If you you use it, then you have a worse death. That's true, but it would it would yeah. make you absolutely fearless in, in combat and battle because you would know that you're this is not the time that I'm yeah. going to die, and you can you can just walk through a battle knowing you're not going to die, and you might get injured, sure, you might get horribly injured, but it you takes know us to Black to Adam when he says I get electrocuted, and he keeps fighting like a champion. Oh yes, <laughs> I forgot about the classic <laughs> movie Black Adam. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, it's gonna crawl, be... crawl is like an old timey Black Adam. It's gonna be like the it's same gonna be movie. A cult, it's gonna be a cult movie. I think people are gonna look back on Black Adam. What fondly. Black Adam? Yeah. Thirty years from now, The Rock's gonna be Hulk Hogan, and we're gonna talk about him. Yeah, hopefully <laughs> less racist. Um, but that's. I also went back and looked into actual Greek mythology of Cyclopses to make sure that that wasn't like a real thing, and it isn't. This is just that's just something they put into this yeah because they usually shoot lasers out of their fucking laser eye right yeah they're like like the world of the worlds what i aliens or whatever. what i was wondering about that backstory and what ha- ends up happening to it real real is his name real real that it's... sounds familiar Rel? 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 Rel. sorry Rel. listen it's the like movie... Rel, but with an r Rel. the names Rel. in this movie are hard to follow so we yeah. don't have to we can so... all forgive each other for not remembering any of them or kill that story about his about his deal um what ends up happening is he they get to a point and he's like i gotta stay here I've, I've seen my own dem- demise and then he kind of comes in as like the you know comes to save the day when they're trying to break into the black fortress and ultimately gets crushed by yeah, the door the, that they've, the doors, as, they've yeah. got they've entered through now i'm wondering if he th- he was supposed to die just randomly he saw the future and was supposed to die randomly or he knew exactly how these series of events were going to play out and he was like, I got to stay here because according to the prophecy, I stay here. And then he knows his own death, obviously doesn't tell them. But uh, there that... are different ways to look at it, because we we do know that if you go against how you're supposed to die, you die in a, a way more horrible way. Yeah. Which he did die in a pretty horrible. He was slowly crushed. That's why I door. wondered. That's why I yeah. wondered if he was like, you know what? I'm going to I'm not going to die here like some weirdo and have like a, a fine death. Probably just get a rock. Yeah, he's like waiting for like a weird he's like wolf just with, with venomous for, teeth yeah. or something. All these like random that. humans are going to think I'm so cool. Like, yeah. <laughs> but he got to have he's a, an you know, alien. He yeah. got to have a save the day moment, which is, you know, much more Because the, the light, you know, the blaster spears just pew, right off of him, right? He's an invincible cyclops. So. Yeah. yeah. And I interpret it not as he would have a more horrible death, just as his the time until he died after he missed his death would be a horrible existence i think he says he's no they, oh. they they say they say like, it'll oh, be okay. painful as yeah. fuck i like, thought i thought i interpreted it as he was gonna agony have, i believe is the hor- word they like, use but i interpreted it as <laughs> that's the, like the worst pain of them all you would just have agony Agonizing. until you finally died 
and that was part of it. That's just how I interpret it. Anyway, well, the good thing about the movie is that it is up to it's our A lot of it's up to interpretation because it, uh, none of it makes a lot of sense, but it's a fantasy movie, so it doesn't need to. I do also it's like perfect. how, what like, clearly about? and, like, because like, you see him at first and you're like, oh, what's this guy going to sound like? And he's just like, greetings, tidings, I am a Cyclops. <laughs> like, oh, he sounds cool. Like, I thought he was going to be like, me, Cyclops, <laughs> you human. Or well, he imme- immediately employs the ability of sarcasm on, on Ergo. Yeah. Instant jokes. Yeah. Ergo's like, <laughs> I don't know if that's magnificent. Friend, magnificent. Uh, he's like, wow. Oh, I you're... see. You're just making fun of me. Let me talk to this kid instead. Yeah. You're uh, magnificent, so. Um... I didn't think I didn't think he was making fun of him. I thought he was uh, proactively acknowledging what his title was. I did also read it like that, and but then just the rest of that interaction made me think it wasn't that. So did you, yeah. So what, like Aaron? How would you address one who's already a friend? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that, that's a good point. He does say that, and that is very yeah. much like this guy has like the Cyclops has been following them for. So you guys don't know me, but I have been watching you. So I feel like we all know each other already. I saw what you did to that chicken, Ergo. You turned into it and then fucked yourself? That's crazy. Um, Eat his own babies. (laughs) I also, when we were talking about the bandits, uh, there was an interesting thing that has a payoff at the very end, but the leader of the bandits, he's basically like, we're not thieves, we're just an amalgamation of uh, people who have been in prison for various reasons. Because it seems yeah, like there's they're a, like a press just down on their luck, man. Just down. They're their not luck. even like ex-convicts. They're like escaped prisoners. Yeah, like they still yeah. have their shackles on. So they stuff. have their shackles, and since uh, John Kroll is the king now, I guess, which I never really understood, because he married the princess. <laughs> Everyone else is dead. But it's because the other kings died in that first scene, yeah, right? So yeah, he, I'm the yeah. king now. Um, mm-hmm. So he he has this thing that has the shackle the shackle key to all the shackles in the in the realm which looks like a tiny crawl it looks like a tiny crawl. i mean glaive <laughs> sorry yeah a tiny crawl glaive <laughs> the, the, this movie is just like smurfs but instead of smurf they put crawl in yeah. everywhere in my head anyway crawl berries crawl berries um <laughs> i'm gonna crawl that crawl and then until she crawls all over my, my crungle berries um, that sounds risky yeah it's risky. i'm going to be back okay yeah. So he, uh, he's like, no, I'm done. So he reve- uh, he reveals that only the king. So it's a key to the shackles to all the shackles in the realm. He reveals that only the king and the king's uh, like king's hand, basically, I forget what they call it, um, are able to actually have that key. And he says, I don't want to be unshackled. Like he's just, he's not shackled together just has shackles on it's like i don't want to be unshackled unless we actually defeat the slayers and we get a nice scene at the very end where he gives him the key and he's like you can unshackle yourself now and he says well i kind of want to keep the shackle on to remember this remember this adventure and he's like well you hold on to that and he's like wait but only the king in the the fucking king's council king's do you remember what it's called King's Court, it was, it was like King the Arthur's King's Court, head counselor or something like that. Yeah, I, I I know what you're talking about, but I there was so much stuff going on in this movie in terms of lore that it's like hard to keep track of like the actual names of everything. But if this movie I, I know, had I know, been I know you, I know a cultural saying, yeah. phenomenon, like we there would be fucking eight of these things. Yeah, we'd, we'd, we'd be looking at the, the like a Krull TV show where like Liam Neeson's characters like grandson is like now i'm a prisoner too shit i gotta get out and need the crow blade <laughs> the crow blade how um, many kids does liam neeson have you know what i you know what my fun idea was of this is that the planet crawl is just a planet in the star wars universe and you know how at the beginning and the end the narrator says and their son will rule the universe the way he says rule makes me be like he's not going to be it's not a like good a thing good, he's not going to be like a, a beloved ruler he's going to rule <laughs> over all of the like, entire does galaxy like this movie take place during like knights of the old republic <laughs> no the main villains the, are the child that was born of those two people anakin is... 
Emperor Palpatine. <laughs> oh. Holy shit! You just can't. They realize. are Palpatine's parents. That's another thing you hate when I when me and Kaylin do on the show. Yeah, but this one works. But this one <laughs> so works. Well. Imagine it doesn't, but only because I know the entire Palpatine story. <laughs> Imagine your your parents had to fight a space swamp thing the size of a castle. And then <laughs> gave birth to you, and they kept telling you about how swamp things are gonna come get you. Like you need to use this glaive, and, and you're like, "That's not a glaive, mom. That's a ninja star." <laughs> and then way <laughs> later, Poe po Dameron is like, well, and then somehow really Palpatine came back. I don't know. He's back, he's back somehow. We don't out. know. Let's go. He got crawl powers, and we don't so know how many clones. <laughs> Oh my Can God. we talk about the Goa Wold though? Like, and how they just like explode out of the armor shells? Because that oh like, God, I thought that's this the movie... coolest part of this movie. So, yeah, the sound. The I love the sound and the, the blood. Because... There's so yes. blood. The Slayers <sighs> were my favorite part of this movie by far because so not good. only were they from space hell, which I love. I love a space yeah. hell. Clearly, yeah. everyone loves space hell. Yeah. They were little. They they were little like blood aliens that just went back into the earth when you killed one of their suits. Their suits looked yeah, like H.R. Yeah. Geiger paintings. They yeah. looked very much like the the xenomorphs, but like different. Obviously, they look armor. Um, like yeah, medieval. Medi- I don't know cool if you've ever watched uh, or sorry played the Destiny video games, but like there's an entire race in Destiny that is clearly the inspired or whatever uh yeah they're they're called it is something like that yeah but i can't I, remember i played called. a bit of destiny I, I know what's up but like they're almost entirely designed off of like that armor set and just his face and everything they're, they're like like necro monsters that just like use the chitin of dead space creatures to like armor themselves and stuff yeah uh which no is... stargate fans no stargate fans they are we're doing cool. stargate this I'm month <gasps> Yeah. we're Join trying we're game. trying to not talk about stargate because we're gonna talk I'm about sorry. it later wait i can't talk about stargate like i don't know what to do <laughs> uh interesting tidbit i almost gave myself a dope medieval bowl cut for this episode but it's good. Good. imagine, for... imagine kalen went to work today in that suit with a, a dope <laughs> medieval bowl cut it like wait, I'll, I'll go get a bowl and do it right now you'd look, like dumb and, you'd look like dumb and dumber if you did that like when they show up in the suits after they open the thing with all the money. Um, sorry. I, I was... owe you a Ferrari. <laughs> I think it's a Ferrari. I was told. I was told that I was yelling, so I'm gonna. I'm gonna. To- I'm gonna take it down. Sorry, Madison. Tell Madison I missed her. This is a little bit her. of a, a higher, higher energy episode. We we were all. Tell yelling her that she she can only bring fire to your water. She or something. Uh, doesn't like what? when I drink fire water very much. <laughs> also, I I don't think that fire water is like we're not allowed to say that anymore. Are we? Oh yeah. What? I think he was just referencing how they put their hands to yes, take the that's exactly. fire from the water. <laughs> that's exactly right, I mean. right, right, right. Okay, never mind. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Is there something else with fire water that I don't know about? <clears throat> I'm sure I, you do know about it. I don't want to be the guy to tell you. <laughs> Ignorantly, not <laughs> allowing F-Y- yourself. Crawl. Fire water <laughs> is another name for alcohol. Oh. And I think he it makes me part. start fires. <laughs> I think he knew that part. Yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. It's sad that Robbie Coltrane died last year. How yeah. about that? Yeah, that is sad. He was such a good actor. Let's talk about him for a minute. Uh, he is not in this movie a ton, but, you know kind of a cutie in this movie with his little stash and his weird little haircut and <laughs> his stout body and he you know he was good in almost every movie i've ever seen him in i can't imagine i can't even think because he's a character actor right he's never yeah, yeah. in he's never in the uh the, the spotlight but like he's he always makes movies better Oh, okay. Does anybody have a favorite Robbie Coltrane? But movie? he was dubbed over in this movie, so you don't even get to hear him talk. Yeah, but so, so is the Queen. In yeah, the right. part. <laughs> First, was he? All, he wasn't even dubbed over with a. Was he dubbed over with a, a British accent too? I don't know. Uh, was, Michael Elston. That's Elfson. hilarious. If that is the case. Was Robbie Coltrane? They got rid of her because it was British. This, the guy, it was a British actor. Yeah. Was Robbie okay. Coltrane in this the guy who looked like Super Mario? Yes. So the funny thing about that. <laughs> Right, so the funny thing about that is I'm watching this whole movie, going, "Fuck, man, this guy looks so familiar." 
this guy looks like some sort of plumber who, nope. you know, needs to save his girl. Okay. <laughs> you, cannot, you cannot tell me that this motherfucker did not look like Mario Mario. Here he is. There he is. May you rest he rest in a, peace. He, he played Dumble, uh, yeah. He played Grim, Grim, Grimble Grower he or whatever. Grumble Grower. No, he played Hagrid. 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 The, Hagrid. the gay yeah. one, right? I have never seen Harry Potter. But no, now he wasn't retconned there's... or is Dumbledore gay? No, J.K. Rowling loves putting gay men in her books, but will never accept if those gay men ever decide to transition. Yeah, if they decide to transition. <laughs> no. Um, but J.K. So, Rowling's line is right here. Yeah, yeah, she's like, I like when men fuck each other, but I do not like the idea of a man deciding with a woman. A man and no. Him. Yeah. It's not even a decision. Anyway, sort of Robbie like Coltrane it's... played Hagrid. He was good at that, but he was probably my favorite and my like every time i try and say who he is i say this name and people are like who and i'm like valentine Goldeneye? valentine from goldeneye yeah and they're like who? Yeah, <laughs> Come on. he's from goldeneye i got it he was in goldeneye and he was in from tomorrow's next door to yesterday or whatever. <laughs> now i don't know if you remember the van helsing movies but he plays mr hyde and he's awesome Wait, in the plural? role i thought there was just the one van helsing movie with with Hugh Jackman? With Hugh Jackman. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He plays Van Helsing. Was there more than one? Well, did I say multiple? You said just... the, the Van Helsing this movies. This is an incredibly strong pen, so. <laughs> oh, he's Mr. Hot at the beginning of the movie. But yeah. that's a big CG monster, man. But it's him. It's him. It's him. So he was he was swinging from the rafters of Notre Dame. That was actually not CGI. He just got really really jacked for that role. Oh, I he fell into a, bu- a bucket he of figured out how to uncanny valley his entire body and face. Yeah, yeah, he did great. He's but the eyes, actor. still in the eyes. I lived inside a computer for forty years to figure out this role. So I just want to um, we've been doing a really good job at filling up this time. Uh, we are going to go a little bit later Good, because I didn't have that much to say. We st- <laughs> we, uh, we started later, so but I just want to give you guys a time check that I would like to do our Half final hour? thoughts in about fifteen minutes. Okay. So if you, I have gone through three of my two pages of notes, <laughs> two pages. Yeah, but I don't need to go through all my notes. Yeah, I've been kind of going through my notes, but I I like jumping around a bit more than going plot because if we had continued to go plot by the plot that he like just came down the mountain with the glaive <laughs> no i know and there's too many things that happen i, I mean there's, there's lots yeah. of stuff to talk about like you know the window in the, the web i want to the... talk about her because i love francesca well so much. also isn't that the name of the princess too like like they're she... both lissa or well she used to be called lissa but then now she's the widow of yeah widow of the web yeah yeah so yeah. this is like is it if like, like in the middle of star thing. wars they like decided it's, it's a common name it's like mora you know it's, there's a bunch of <laughs> right 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 yeah, yeah. But like it would be <laughs> as though like in the middle of Star Wars if they decided to make Obi Wan have a love uh, interest, have right? a weird love interest. Yeah. He's like, I had your son Obi Wan, and I killed him. fucking killed his ass. <laughs> Can you forgive me? Because you what? were around, and now I'm a spider queen who eats <laughs> sand. You're like what the fuck? Sneaky <laughs> hot when you take those twenty three layers of makeup off. Yeah. <laughs> It's true. She was but here's the That's thing hard. about that that uh, that kind of. She's 38. When she did that role, that actress was 38. You're well, she 38. Looked, she. We both look good for 38. My hairline yeah. could do some work, but don't look at that. Um. So <laughs> great thing... beard though. Great beard. Oh, that's it's all beard all the time. So the thing is, <laughs> hair turned upside down. <laughs> okay. Let's, let's, no. You're laughing too hard. Um. The thing about that scene was, I I fully went like it's an 80s fantasy movie. She's fully gonna like <clears throat> that makeup's coming off and she's going to be revealed to be a an attractive yeah. younger woman 80s and, hot my favorite and i'm like yeah I'm, i was my like favorite that, hot it's a little on it is. Is, but also like it, it's that weird thing of like young is more beautiful which like is almost uncomfortable by today's standards like it was we do you know what do you know what i'm getting at here but like, they still do it though like you guys watch that uh, happens midnight, all the time midnight Midnight Mass and uh, even the the Prometheus movies that came out a couple of years ago, yeah. they do the same thing, right? Where like people are obsessed with youth, and 
people are Not treated different. People, <laughs> Kalen's obsessed with like, I need the dustiest pussy I ever <laughs> saw before I get going. <laughs> He's gonna teach you something. Steve is full <laughs> on like like Jason mode in this fucking. Sorry, episode. I'm having a great time. Um, <laughs> no, but the the point that i'm i'm making is that like he i think in that moment he's like seeing her for what he remembered her as and he's realizing who she is and like i loved her damn it yeah he's seeing yeah. beyond what she looks like to us That's as fair. the audience That's being fair. like Ooh, she's a she's an old woman who lives at the middle of a million spider webs which is like Oops. well they were like young love you know so they I all know that... each other as they were right or i mean yeah yeah. yeah, young enough that they had a child that she killed. murdered. <laughs> he, and she literally said, said it as like a child. So I had to take my rage out on the child. Which is like, that's where I was, I was kind of like liking it. And, and then that happened. And I was like, oh, okay, this is like. I thought it was going to be the reveal that she, they were the parents of John fucking Krull. That's what I thought too. Yeah. John Krull John is actually John Krull. his dad who died in his, you know, at that wedding that was going to happen. He was not actually John Krull's dad. He was. Just some fucking Uncle asshole Krull. who adopted baby. He was, he was Uncle. <laughs> yeah, he found a little baby carried by a giant spider, and he's like, "This will be my baby now." I uh, that part lost me so hard. Like it was so out of place with that whole bit. That felt like in the Avengers movie where um, <clears throat> where Black Widow and and Hawkeye go and start talking about some shit we didn't see. So they were like, remember the fucking... Yeah, like, remember Budapest? Like, no, I don't. We're gonna get one of those movies in a year or two. I don't know. If we oh, yeah, when years. Jeremy Renner <laughs> grows back and Oh, yeah, leg. shit, I forgot about that. He's okay. fine. Are they gonna... <laughs> also, didn't they get pissed like... at Scarlet uh, after she wanted money for the widow for being released on streaming instead of theaters or yeah, something I don't like that? Think we're, I don't think we're gonna get any more fucking black widow in the well yeah that's also a thing where she would have made like millions more dollars if she had it had been released in theaters like that's get that money girl like if they put that movie in theaters she doesn't go to work for charity if they put that movie in theaters and it didn't do that well it still would have made money which is the fucking main thing it was just because the well it was also in the middle of the pandemic (laughs) yeah everybody calm down but they didn't put in theaters at all well, they couldn't because theaters were not open. No, but when the theaters <laughs> well, Tenet came back was in and... theaters. God, the, uh, I hated that movie so much. I I, I, I actively hate that movie. <laughs> what Tenet? Oh man, if you only seen it once, you gotta watch it again. It's so well, good. Gotta, you know, and if you've only seen it twice, time. you gotta watch it backwards. Put it Three in times your mind. Sure. Done. Done. It'll change your fucking brain. And also, turn up the volume a lot because it's a real quiet movie. Take DMT <laughs> and then just watch it. <laughs> Hans Zimmer, uh, he'll take you to the moon and back. <laughs> <laughs> right. Let's get back on tracks here. Okay. Yo, how about how about those all black eyes? That shit, that shit was spooky. Yeah, the changeling. The changeling. The see, that's when I was looking at Ergo and going, "What the fuck is this guy? He can't be a changeling because canonically, he's a wizard. No, he's, he's a wizard. Yeah, exactly. He's a wizard." He's king of the Emerald Kingdom or whatever the fuck his cave is called. Why does he have a little boy with him all the time? He likes little Yeah, insert. that was weird. He's insert the only people pervert he... joke Well, it's the, it's the only <laughs> person he could relate to fully because he is mentally deranged. Actually, the way he said, like, the little boy at the end is just like, I have no family now. Like, maybe it was just his grandfather, you know? Like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that was a yeah. sweet moment. Or maybe he was the only one that would be able to emerald eyeball see shit, and he like found. He's him the next like, chosen one. Yeah, know? he's yeah. like one day you'll <laughs> so, be able to talk to the emerald crystals like I do. I do want to relate. Chlorians. Yeah, I do want to relate <laughs> another video game uh, to this, like clearly inspired by, but the the seer, um, and the green crystal goblin. No, sorry, no. <laughs> <laughs> not spider-man 2 for ps2 uh but the le- the legend of zelda link to the past um the sages in that really reminded me like they seem like they could have been inspired by the seer in this and that green crystal looked a lot like uh in that game you have to get the the three you have to beat the first three dungeons and then you go to the dark world and the, the game opens up but that this game or this movie kind of reminded me of like a link to the past in a lot of ways where they did they went and got like the fire thing and then the green thing and then the 
mountain thing or whatever, and then they went into like the dark world. And I that was like I, some fifth element shit. I really, I really wonder if the per, like the if uh, Miyamoto or not Miyamoto, whoever fucking made Zelda at Nintendo. Um, I can't think of if it's like Sakaguchi. No, that's Final Fantasy. Um, I wonder if they were like that crawl movie. There's a lot to. Cause it's a, this movie's a- all right, everybody. So we're making this new game. It's called Zelda. Take a bite of the crawl apple. Everybody, <laughs> come on down. Take a bite. Nobody's seen this. We're gonna repackage it. I'm gonna be rich. <laughs> so I got- one guy's like, I got an idea. It's called Ding's Fire. You slap it down between your thighs, and you create a big blast of fire. Is that crawl like? It is crawl like because that's crawl like. All right, let's boss. put it in the game. The final boss is beaten by just fire too. <laughs> Did you guys feel that the final battle was like too easy or too short? Or it's like, like a modern, yeah, it it's shit. like a modern day shit. final battle. Uh, a lot of movies. The power of love solved all the issues. A lot of MCU, wrap this up, guys. Let's a wrap lot of MCU up. final battles <laughs> were, were are very similar to this final battle. It's it's uh you know, one of the main issues with this movie is that uh, the Beast does not have a proper henchman to right. have them contend with throughout every time they run into an issue it's a random thing that has nothing yeah. to do with uh the beast or it's the beast possessing like a form or creating a form or something they fight the which, slayers exactly one time really and it's when they they the my... changelings the changelings a little i feel like the slayers and then changeling but higher in the you know hierarchy imagine there was like one changeling who was like above changeling. yeah yeah master changeling like he was a, above all the yeah, others like and, and, and he had to keep reporting back to the beast yeah. you're right he doesn't have a number two he doesn't have an yeah he he's doesn't. like and yeah. he's like i have them exactly where i want them my lord we're bringing them to the spider cave where they will be feasted on by that fucking nasty bitch that lives there <laughs> she has the same name as the princess you're trying to rule <laughs> And like That'll that kind of stuff, off. yeah, like that kind of stuff would have been it would have sort of escalated the power of the beast because the beast seems like he has to deal with his own shit. Like how power this guy can fly a whole palace through space, but he doesn't have somebody to take care of his clerical business for him. Minus like, the so. glaive, he's invincible. But the yeah. glaive, you know, it's his kryptonite. He's like, he I'm did. going to go to this planet. The planet that has the one item that can destroy me. But nothing can destroy me except for the glaive, so I'm going to go there and get it. <laughs> Over my soul. I hope that a prince doesn't made a princess and they combine their As long as there are two their... feuding kingdoms <clears throat> yeah. bound they, they, by I hope fire they don't combine water, fire and water right. so the prince <laughs> can become the king and put his hand in molten lava to get the glaive out and then destroy me with it. And he gets there, and number two is like, um, Mr. Beast, I have some bad news. Um, and he's like, ooh. <laughs> he's like, now everybody put your hand on a car, and the last person to pull your hand from the car gets the car. That's a Mr. Beast reference. Oh. What about, yeah. what about the pretty show? Yeah. There was that Vita van, I think. That Mr. did, yeah. Beast. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, well, Pat, uh, I suck the air of the room with the Mr. Ooh. Beast reference. <laughs> yeah, I thought we had we were on a good roll until you decided to make it topical. Now, now this episode is dated, Jason. It's true. In six months, Mr. Beast is going to be put in jail for being like a sex <laughs> offender or some shit, and we're going to have to I delete hope this episode. He's going to Chris Benoit's family and fucking. This, I'm going to have to take this episode down. Um, so I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't really have much more to say. No, I, I had a question I asked earlier, and I, it got kind of trampled by our bit that we just ran <laughs> with for too long. Caitlin's like, uh, I, can't remember, <laughs> I can't remember what it was. I have 20% yeah. power left. Okay, we gotta, we'll, let's take her home soon here. No, no, no. Think of the question. I don't know. Okay, so how about this, then? I'll c- create a new question. If So, like, I do truly believe that if the the beast had a henchman that was foiling them the entire time or like you know turn coding or and like dealing with them for a moment like and a like mate yeah like dealing with them and then like and then going back and reporting to him or like even like a vader style where he, he comes and fuck shit up for a bit and then they like a silver get, surfer get and an then maybe he turns yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah yeah like anything yeah. like okay so that's yeah. what my question is going to be then 
what kind of like like number two would you like to the beast like master changeling just like master, a changeling a master, master who changeling. had like complete control can change into anything you know with all the magic like he can like grab a person and like spin in a tornado and then let go of the person and then there's like two of them and he's like which one is the real one <laughs> but he wouldn't say that he would be like what no i'm the real one <laughs> some shit and they're like which one's the real one yeah that would be kind of cool. just like that just like that. yeah all right kaylin what's your what's your pick what what do i want the beasts number two to be yeah, uh, like I think we can all agree that the one of the biggest weakest points of this movie is that he doesn't have like a, a scary henchman that's like working for him. He's doing it himself. He's like, I'm gonna make your girlfriend not like you anymore by the, tricking him into kissing somebody. And you're like, what the fuck is this shit? Like, well, so murder. I, I could have killed you, but I love you this hour. <laughs> if they expanded on that that girl that was trying to get. Uh, the prince slash new king to cheat on Lissa, the princess slash new queen. If that was like developed a little bit more, that could have been like kind instead of, of being yeah. thirty seconds long. It was like and then she know, gets the banished whole movie maybe to yeah. somewhere yeah, 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 yeah. just banished. Whoa! <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I got, love really does conquer. I got yeah. one. Since uh, since Mario is in their party, I think if Magic Koopa just showed up and just started fucking doing his like <laughs> triangle, circle, square magic at them and making, making the fucking uh, floor underneath them turn into like nothing, and then they fell down and had to grab onto a cage and like start climbing around on a cage, I think that'd be pretty rad. Quick side question, Aaron, you down for Stargate next week? Yeah, yeah. If you'll have Wait. me, I'll definitely. I love Stargate. Wait, like it, too much? It's a problem. Gentlemen, are you down with that? Yeah. I mean, I guess I am now. I'm sweating, so that means I'm having a <laughs> good time. I actually can't do it. I'm just I just kidding. realized I have another podcast. <laughs> no, I'm <laughs> <laughs> okay. So while you're doing this podcast, somebody yeah, messaged you. That's how quickly you. he's blowing up. Yeah. There's oh, what? People. Oh, let me, let me, what were you saying? People outside the window. <laughs> so you were actually on another podcast right now. <laughs> yeah, it's like another camera on him, and he's like muting and being like, "So my thoughts on StarCraft." Are, I mean, StarCraft. Starcraft. Star- uh, I have thoughts on StarCraft, though. If you want to talk about StarCraft, okay. So, so I think that my the... answer yeah, yeah, is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I would have just liked a Darth Vader, like somebody who would come in and fuck shit up, and then like have some sort of interaction with them and threaten them and kill people of some import you know lesser import to greater import like liam neeson gets fucking shot by some random like they all needlessly die. like imagine Liam Neeson. he had the the jedi rat tail thing well he had two of them but yeah he was just a padawan back then yeah imagine he got picked up by the guy that has been tormenting them the whole time and his neck got snapped and then he got thrown on the ground or he got stabbed and then they killed killed the darth vader type character like you know like they there's so or, much shit or they could have done see i like they the, underutilized the, the foils in final fantasy games are always like sniveling that they just follow you around and torment you it'd be cool if like way earlier lee i thought liam neeson's character was gonna be way bigger because now he's fucking earth no. liam neeson he so, was just some dude if he, was he in dark man yet at this point n- no no dark no. man is like 1989 no. or 1990 but um what happens is maybe he gets shot with one of these beams from a changeling. He becomes the foil. So he like leaves the party Ooh. and then he yeah. comes back and starts fucking with them. I think that could have been a cool. Madness uh, and like, Cyclops was the That's foil. like Willow. The new Willow show is like that. Um, Spoilers. No, I, I, agree, I agree though. But, but then that would have, been, <laughs> that would have been sort of like, you know what I'm saying is like a, an impose because he's huge, right? Like he's so much taller than everybody else. That that would have been cool. Too. Oh yeah, if, yeah, if, yeah, uh, yeah. Well, I didn't know the Cyclops' status, and the only picture I saw, I saw him with Liam Neeson, so I didn't know what his yeah. deal was going to be anyway. anyway oh, that I, what I, I think that the, <laughs> my main my main point of that question was that this movie was in dire need of of some sort of like secondary villain that wasn't just the big bad guy who's like i bet i could convince you to kiss me if you (laughs) decide to not want to kiss your husband anymore yeah yeah it was so long and he he didn't even once kiss her like he couldn't do it he's like "Ah, god damn it how do i convince her to not like like this guy he just showed up 
looking like the guy first without showing his gigantic monster face. Yeah. yeah. Done. 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 That's also another <laughs> issue is that like they rely too much on the power of love in this movie as like the binding force of like what's going That's on. The power of love. The simpler time is the eighties. Like you needed yeah. the power of love. This yeah. movie came out the same year as Return of the Jedi. I the know. third Star Wars movie. <laughs> they were probably in theaters at the same you know, time. You know what love story exists in Star Wars? Han Solo and Princess Leia, two secondary characters who fall in love with each other. They they satisfy the love arc while Luke is just what like about Luke learning to become a cool wizard. That's like what that's, that's what you want, right? You There's no one to make him a master. He is not a real master. And even when he finally pulls his glaive out at the end of this movie, he hucks it at the shell, and yeah. it takes like fucking. 10 minutes to like saw through it like what the fuck is going on there terrible give me a seizure the flashing light over and over and over and over, <laughs> and over and over again i don't know man i can't imagine being a seven-year-old watching that and being excited i would probably be like distracted by anything else in the room while well, that's <laughs> going on yeah, prospects just the woods so. well yeah. you were also seven in 1992 so like there was other stuff to watch you just this oh, movie. and even things that were super like palpable for a seven-year-old, I was still distracted. That's <laughs> fine. <laughs> I think that's eighty. Is somebody walking down the <laughs> stairs? Yeah. There is a lot of uh, mental illness on this podcast right now. Um, that said, let's take her home, boyos right. and Be- Be- Before we take her home, Aaron, do you have? I'm not sure if you made notes for this, but is there any 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 hot hot topics you want to address before we start to wrap things up 23 sets the widow of the web is not actually a widow because he's alive <laughs> <laughs> yeah no, that, that's we're good, true we're good. yeah 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 but were they married <laughs> i don't know but she's, yeah. she's maybe she's a, a widow, widow from another Syria. another man yeah, yeah. An the other spider yeah. yeah but i mean she did kill their son that's like the biggest She's the murderer of the web. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't care that much. He, he didn't like, know. He oh, never met that kid. Right this whole time that I didn't <laughs> He's like, care that he what? And then she's like, here, take this oh, sand. Oh, no. <laughs> Make sure that the sand doesn't... Oh, that's the question that I was going to ask. How would you take the sand out of the thing? Because you, you can't let it run through your fingers. Do you not have any pockets at all? Like, he's just... Yeah, what about pockets? Well, I mean, the thing is, is that that would count as running through your fingers, right? Oh, so you have to hold it the whole time. Hands in your pockets. How do you climb the web covered in bells? Yeah. Yeah. I would probably, because the only thing is that all of it has to be. Three ninjas reference? No, the webs were covered in bells. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Jingle, jingle. The spider's coming. So as long as you keep one grain of sand, everything's fine. Just just put it in your mouth? Oh, oh, what did he do? It has has to to be in your hand. It has to be in your hand, guys. So you put your hand in your mouth. (laughs) You guys keep being like, I'll put it anywhere else. And it's like, no, it has to remain in your hand. Just hold one hand up. Your fingernails. Just like. Oh, the fingernails is a good one, actually. I'll buy that. Yeah. All right. My other question was better than this. I have, Where would I, you keep this and? I'm going to end this podcast and we're going to do our final thoughts. All right. And I'm going to go You're first. in charge. And I'll tell you That's what. That's very somber. My computer is about to die. And if I don't read the re- the thing I wrote <laughs> before be this thing here. dies, I'm going to have no idea what to say. So here we go. <laughs> <clears throat> this is one of the better old... <laughs> This is okay. You're nailing this. <laughs> this I, I know I'm the best podcaster in the history of it. Uh, this is one of the better old '80s fantasy movies I've seen. I truly think this should have been one of my childhood favorites, along with Ninja Turtles. Like I talked about earlier, and I even wrote like I mentioned because I knew I was going to talk about it. Uh, this movie really excels with its scenery and locations. I love the Black Fortress. Uh, for its era, I can imagine people uh, thinking this is like new and fresh and also plays homage to classic stuff like the original star Wars and like the Lord of the Rings cartoon. Um, but after we've talked up through it, this is like the new star Wars is in theaters this year. And everybody's like, this is a, what is, ha- this is a rip off. Um, I, I forgot to mention this movie went up against jaws three. 
<laughs> Superman 3, Star Wars 3, and two Holy. separate James Bond movies that yeah. were released in the same year. <laughs> so it did never stood a chance. Um, I can see the inspiration for many franchises here, including how the new, like the 2000s Lord of the Rings films were sort of made. Legend of Zelda, some of the Final Fantasy games uh, that would come out shortly after this movie came out. Um, it's weird and good, and I want to watch it again for sure. My only real gripe is that some of the pacing was a little slow. Uh, but that's part for the course in a fantasy adventure film. Uh, Dark Crystal and La- Labyrinth are similar with this. Uh, Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings movies are al- also guilty of this 20 years later. Steve, you made a good point about the fucking traveling scenes in adventure movies can be a little bit a little bit too much. Um, eight total, by the way. Eight it was eight okay uh it's just nice. a, it's just nice. a trope of the genre uh the special effects well do... it also helps implement like time that's true left. that's true it, it works better for the lord of the rings movies than it does in a movie like this that could they could have cut them down to make the runtime shorter when i was seven i could run to the bathroom run back that's not really miss anything this is a very so. much a, like almost like a kid's kid's movie with like scary shit in it it's um, like never-ending story scary like it, yeah uh... Um, the special effects do look jank by today's standards, but for the time, there's some there's some cool stuff happening. I'm surprised we didn't talk about this, but I'm surprised that we saw a full on morph from human to animal. It looked mm. kind of bad, but it's interesting that they tried it at least. It was like at, four different types of special yeah. effect. It yeah, was at, like the to- a, at the time, it was a big act. It was a big act. It was, they were <laughs> they tried their best. Um. Four to five. I give it a four to five. Like I think. Holy that smokes! It's, yeah, I think. What? I think it's a pretty important movie Jesus. for a, for a lot of reasons, Success. and I enjoyed watching it. So, like, <laughs> this is my personal review, right? So it's not like, you know, I'm not going to change it. It's four <laughs> to five. Um, I also give it a pack of fire mares riding over the plains to the final dungeon and triumphantly beating the slayers to save the princess. Cool. Cool. We don't clap. Okay. Let's Podcast. take it over to Steve next. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Though a bit of a slog, having never seen it before, Krull, a science fantasy adventure set on another world, dealing with madness and magic, <laughs> does have more than a few chunks of good that stand out amongst dated pacing and digital effects. I do appreciate the attempt at creating a rich lore and through it succeed. It it succeeds in certain areas. It ultimately has you asking questions regarding logic rather than wanting answers to the mysteries it presents. Not all of the effects are bad and it, you know, those, those effects do give it a sense of charm and the music heightens the nostalgic feel of a beloved childhood movie even to a person who hasn't seen it such as myself the digital effects are where you feel the age obvious uh compositing that happens like a lot of the movie (laughs) like over and over again we're like oh my god i can see the outline around that fucking guy's (laughs) hair Um, aggressively 80s yeah and like those those scenes are meant to bewilder you but the stuff that you actually enjoy are the practical effects as I go on to say, the while the practical effects leave you curious and excited. Uh, though I felt my eyes getting heavy at times, I do enjoy the movie overall and can see how it holds a special place for those who watched it as kids. I can really say... Uh, <clears throat> sorry, I can't really say the movie... I can't really... <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm trying to read my thing and I should just talk. I'm better at talking than reading it. I can't really say much about this movie other than that I can imagine it uh, if it was in the hands of a younger, less practical filmmaker, it would be better. So what I mean by that is the guy who made this movie was very old and he made one of the greatest car chases ever made, uh, Bullet. Uh, It's been parodied in countless other films. Uh, You know in The Simpsons when like he's chasing the car and the cars keep going like that's from the movie bullet like it's a very good movie but this man decided you know what in my old age i'm gonna make a fantasy film like these young 
crazy Rick characters Rick like Lucas and Spielberg and uh, what's his name? Ridley Scott? And, like he <laughs> tried to make one and he just shot it like a fucking detective film. And you're like, no, <laughs> like what the fuck is wrong with you? Like any movie that has like a, an Errol Flynn rope swing within the first like 10 minutes of the movie, you're like, oh, an old man made this. And that happens within the first uh, 10, 10 minutes of the movie. Uh, uh, the movie may have been more captivating if it was made by a younger person. It's not a bad movie, but it feels its age. Like it, it really does. It, it looks old. It feels old. Uh, even the the music, like as much as you can hear those musical notes of Horner from like Aliens and his later work, you can also feel the influence from earlier work where it's just like basic ass like like musical bullshit uh i think what i'm gonna give this movie is the ranking of glaive if glaive meant a starfish with blades on its tips but that's not what glaive means so it's not truly a glaive it's just a starfish in glaive's clothing (laughs) that's my ranking all right fantastic that was comprehensive as fuck um we'll uh l- let's do kaylin next and we'll end it up with aaron and then we'll all go to bed because it's very late even not me i'm gonna ass. play video games and watch movies <laughs> nice. 18 to 12 30 go to bed <laughs> <laughs> um so um i couldn't find the words on it i couldn't find the words to make to write a final thought to this the it had elements that made me feel like i should like this and for some reason it just didn't do it for me um i feel part of that could be the fact that i don't have the nostalgia to it i I would assume it's kind of the main factor i always find it interesting though when a movie has elements that i like but I just don't like the movie for some reason. I can't put my finger on on why. Um, it was fine. Uh, I'm glad that you brought it to the table, Aaron. Uh, I've never heard of it, so I got to see it. I got to see some I've never seen before. I was, I enjoyed. I, I enjoyed moments. It was long. Like I don't have a problem with long movies. But this movie was longer than I think it needed to be. Um, I really liked the quicksand scene. That was probably my favorite scene. Um, at the end of the day, I give it a... I want to go watch Princess Bride. Okay. Yeah. I I want to go... That's fair as fuck. <clears throat> this movie go is like a watch. not as great Princess Bride, for sure. Yeah. Even the, like, the Aldo Montoya character looks like john kroll kind of he does yeah he does actually yeah, yeah. they wear the same clothes he just doesn't have the zorro thing on his face and he doesn't have a cool backstory he's just like i don't like I'm the stripes on a his handsome head. young man who will be the father of the ruler of the galaxy his one day. cheekbones are too big or something he's like he he classically can... handsome one thing like, i kept thinking much. was he kind of looks like a <laughs> benjamin cumberbatch like or what Benedict? Benedict. <laughs> yes, yeah, <sorry, not laughs> looks like Freneling Conky. Looks like Bingy Bong Bunger Butt, but mm, he does. He does. Kurt kind of. Russell mixed with Kenneth Branagh. Like, oh yeah. <laughs> what was the second name? What was the second name? Kenneth what? Branagh. Uh, or Branagh? How do you say it? Kenneth Branagh. Branagh? I think. Yeah. I think we're all saying it differently, but it all sounds the same. So that's fine. Okay, back. <laughs> he directed <laughs> Thor one. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, all right, Aaron, why don't you take us the fuck home? Grace us. I was uh, about I the crawl video game. It's here. It is. <laughs> yeah. It's for Holy Atari. Shit. Yeah, it's for Atari. Uh, I didn't write anything down. I know it's. Uh, I watched it too many times when I was young, so I didn't know that you'd be judging it. I think that you should watch Ice Pirates. Oh, I've seen see. Ice Pirates. There yeah. we go. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah. Hey, did you see this one? Hey, did you see this one? Ice Pirates. Um, <laughs> okay, in lieu of not really having a final thought, 
Um, Freestyle. Do you? Can you give it? What? What's the gameplay loop for the crawl game? Oh, God. oh, I don't remember. <laughs> the just... princess is in another crawl tower. Is it a side yeah. scroller? Or is it like a... I think it's uh, actually. I might even have another one of these. I don't remember too much about the game. It was for Atari. I'm not that old, but how about this? If you were going to pitch this movie to someone who's never seen it, what would you tell them? It's a space opera written by a, a dude who liked to write, you know, terrible old British movies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was like one thing that I wanted to say is that the guy who was in charge of writing this movie was mostly doing television. And you can tell because it's broken up into like 14 different oh, episodes yeah. of a television it's episode. Show. It yeah. is episode. I actually can, yeah. when I think about it, it was kind of like that. Like, here's the episode, episode where they yeah. go to the swamp. Here's the episode yeah. where they fucking break in. Yeah, the the spider queen. Yeah. yeah. Here's the episode and where, I'll... like, the guys get stuck by those fucking uh, pointy bits and one guy dies, but the rest of them are fine. I definitely had this, like, taped onto one of my, like, many mixtape cassette tapes and it was watched over and over again pointlessly like so a vhs collection of just all tape from tv like i had a yeah, the phantom yeah. of the opera musical taped from tv nice. you guys into... can put more than one movie on a vhs back yeah I, I did i had a bunch yeah Mixed tapes. i have yeah. a bunch of pirated vhs movies I, had... I ended up buying them but like i have like three movies on one movie i'm like wtf movie people yeah I had uh, the whole It miniseries on a v on one of those like double VHSs. Oh, thick yeah. boys, yeah, the thick one. Yeah. So anyway, that's our show, Aaron. Thank you for being oh, here. Oh, wait. MPAA. Oh. Twenty six seven ninety five. Nice. Thank you. Um, we do the MPAA uh, number because Good. things that, that people like to listen to. Kaylin, um, did you do your uh, your buy skip rent or whatever? Uh, so personally, it's a pass. <laughs> At the very least, I'll I'll sense, say it's yeah. a, like give it a watch. You've never given anything a pass. I've never yeah. given anything. I'm a very, very. Um, we've been doing this podcast for like total since like 2019. This is his first pass. He's like, fuck, like, crawl, get it out, send it to space. And you're like, yeah, give, uh, give it a shot. And you're like, pass. I I ow. A little bit. My nostalgia. Like, dude, that's like, I don't, like, I feel bad. Like, I don't want to hurt your feelings, Eric. Yeah. You did, to, Cage. You did. Welcome to Hey, Did You See This One, where we're not going to sugarcoat it. And even if the guest is loves the movie. Well, I have a bunch more movie that you will like more. So, but... Sweet. Well, Yo, uh, join us next week, please, yeah, if please. you will. Let's, let's I'll check I'll check up. my calendar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, if you, yeah. Too many podcasts. I'm going to wear normal clothes. Then knock like, down your door. Until next month. This mm. time next month. No, probably the 20th of next month. Okay, um, so for uh, for Aaron, whoa, whoa, whoa. oh yeah, okay. For Aaron, see, I invented this, so I know how to do it. For Aaron <laughs> and for Kalen and for Stephen, I'm Jason. For Jason, for Kalen, and for Aaron, I am Stephen. For Stephen, Jason, and Aaron, I'm Kellen. For Jason, Stephen, and Kalen, I'm Aaron. Wow. Uh, and I have to ask one question that everybody has on their mind, and that is, uh, hey, do you see this one? Sweet, I'm back. Okay, here we go. Hey, hey, hey did you, oh. this one. Hey, did you see this one? No. I only have 10% battery. Aaron, give us one. Hey, did you see this one? Oh, that's a nice one. Mm. Mm. Aaron, <laughs> uh, yes. And, uh, Wait, you guys know each out. other? Oh, oh no, I shouldn't have said all those crazy things about Kalen before he arrived. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Cajun sauce, we'll talk. Cajun sauce, that's a good one. <laughs> all right. Yo, yo, uh, what's that Cajun mayo called? Chipotle mayo. <laughs>